Today, from the Los Angeles Coliseum, it's the Cleveland Browns versus the Los Angeles Raiders. Brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Chrysler. Chrysler believes a luxury car should be a great driving car. At Chrysler, we're driving to be the best. And by Hewlett Packard. Computer solutions from the people who never stop asking, what if? Welcome to the Coliseum in Los Angeles on a beautiful 70-degree day in Southern California. Hi, everybody. I'm Marv Albert, along with Joe Namath. And this is a matchup of two teams going in opposite directions. The Raiders are merely playing out the schedule. The Cleveland Browns are vying for a playoff spot. Now, in a big score on that AFC uh, Central Houston uh, in front of Pittsburgh by the score 24-16 in the uh, fourth quarter. And for Cleveland, it really comes down in terms of playoff hopes to uh, winning at Pittsburgh next Saturday afternoon. In effect, today, they are merely playing for a, a home field advantage if they make the playoffs. Yeah, but they need that winning edge. Winning breeds winning. And to go into Pittsburgh convinced that they're a better football team than Pittsburgh to get in the playoffs they have to believe in themselves they need to muster up all the momentum possible to go into Pittsburgh next week they've only won once there in the last 17 games so they need momentum to get going it has been a house of horrors uh, in uh, Pittsburgh for the Cleveland Browns Bo Jackson sending it out because of the sprained ankle so Mark Wilson figures to be going for the uh, long bomb with that running game certainly uh, affected by uh, the loss of Bo, who is inactive. L.A. has won the toss. They will receive. And here is the kickoff from Lee Johnson. The return by Doki Williams. So Williams across the 15-yard line. The Los Angeles Raiders with a record of 5-8. and eight. Mark Wilson at quarterback, and the running backs are Marcus Allen and Steve Strahan, the three-year man from... Boston College, James Lofton having an excellent season. And that offensive line has been beaten up by injury this season. Holloway, Lewis, Mosbaugh, Moraldi, and the rookie John Clay is back at right tackle. He missed the last two weeks uh, with an ankle problem. It is a first down for the Raiders from their 17-yard line. And it is Strahan. Eddie Johnson, the inside linebacker on the stop. Eddie Johnson on the Sam top. Clancy, Bob Golick, and the man they call Big Daddy, Carl Hairston up front. Clay Matthews, considered to be the most valuable player on that Cleveland defensive unit uh, this season. And an outstanding secondary, led by uh, the guys who like to bark, Minifield and Dixon at the corners. Second down at eight. Wilson running for it. Gets out to the 24-yard line, an advance of four. The inside linebacker, Eddie Johnson, on the stop. Had very good pass protection that time. Uh, Mark Wilson could have thrown the ball to James Loft and maybe gained a few more yards, but uh, Wilson's a bit concerned with turning the ball over. Had three interceptions last week. He's been known to eye his receiver too long. Here he gets the good pass protection, but decides to take it upfield for a short gainer. And it sets up a third down and four. The Raiders from their 25-yard line. Marcus Allen. And he has the first down. Five-yard advance for Allen comes in averaging just under four per game. He has certainly turned it from a frustrating injury hit year with bad ankles slowing him down last season. But he's handled the season with a lot of class. You know, they brought in Bo Jackson. Marcus uh, wasn't going to see the kind of playing time that he normally sees if he uses a blocker more. And Marcus, being a team player that he is, adjusted beautifully. First down for the Raiders from their 30 yard line. They come off the loss to the Kansas City Chiefs, 16 to 10. It is Allen out to the 36 inside linebacker Eddie Johnson made the stop picked up seven it will be a second and three and last week in Kansas City a controversial penalty filled game Raiders generating 400 yards offensively but scored only one touchdown another score by Marcus Allen reversed by an instant replay decision, Joe, and the uh, Raiders are not uh, great fans of the instant replay, <laughs> should be pointed out. 
second and three from the 37. Allen gets to the first down marker, the inside linebacker, Mike Johnson, second year man from Virginia Tech, making the stop. Good blocking on the left side by number 76, Holloway, getting that hole open for Marcus. Marcus has a unique cutback ability that you don't see many backs have, and he's able to make these breaks for good yardage. He was just shy of the first down. It is a third and one. And now Allen found the hole and picked it up. In fact, picked up five on the play. Ray Ellis and Hanford Dixon combining on the stop. Cleveland Browns at eight and five going into today, tied for first with Pittsburgh. One game in front of Houston. Now, last Sunday, the Browns beat Cincinnati 38-24 as the Kozar threw for four. Vance Mueller now in the backfield. Second-year man from Occidental. Now, the draw to Allen did not work. Lost three on the play. Daryl Sims on the stop. Daryl Sims, Bob Golick, they just stuffed that middle right here. Number 78, Carl Harrison, they didn't get pushed off the line one bit. They won the battle in the line of scrimmage that time. Marty Schottenheimer's main concern for his defense is not to give up the big gainer. They isolate their cornerbacks one-on-one -on -one so often. They're worried about Doki Williams and, of course, James Loft. It is a second. And 13 from the 41. We are just underway at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. And it appears to be a delay of game. You see, this is the kind of thing that really throws a quarterback's tempo off. You know, you're out there, you're getting into a pretty good drive. The play comes in a little late, you get a penalty. And, you know, one thing, I, one reason I really like quarterbacks calling the game is they're able to establish some kind of tempo, some kind of flow out there in the field. Uh, you have these kind of penalties, it only hurts the momentum. And the Los Angeles Raiders have been heavily penalized this season among the leaders in that department of the NFL. Second and 18 now for Wilson. He has Mueller. So Vance Mueller on a 16-yard Pass play, Clay Matthews, the outside linebacker, made the stop. Mueller has outstanding speed. Fourth round draft pick last year. He's averaged about five yards per carry. Mueller has good speed. What happens is Clay Matthews, the linebacker on this side, drops deep to help out on the wide receiver. And Mueller just has an open field with a convoy of blockers in front of him. Matthews really recovers nicely to make the tackle from behind. Raiders from midfield with a third down and four. Six minutes gone by in this first quarter. And Wilson going up top. Penalty flag throw. Doki Williams, the intended receiver, covered by Felix Wright and Frank Metafield. There's Doki, who caught a couple of touchdown passes against the Browns here last season. And the call is against Cleveland. Well, on the right side of your screen, Doki Williams is going to try to break inside and he'll get grabbed and head up field. If he's not grabbed over there by midfield, he might have this for six points. This pass protection so far by the Raiders line has been very good. It's going to be a long afternoon for the cornerbacks uh, of the Browns if they don't start getting some pressure from the defensive front and the linebackers back there in the quarterback. And the Raiders, who have been hammered by injury, are starting their 14th different offensive unit in 14 league games. So they've done a lot of shuffling on that line. First down from the 45. Here is Allen. Got a little extra out of it. Tripped up. Picked up eight on the play. Many field. And Hairston combining on the stop. And we will uh, take a check around the 10 minute ticker Seattle in a seesaw battle leading Chicago now Houston over Pittsburgh 24 16 so the Oilers looking to stay alive in the AFC Central final score Minnesota knocks off Detroit 
Philadelphia came from behind after the Jets had come back. Second and three. Allen. Try to cut to the outside and cut off. Eddie Johnson, the inside linebacker. On the stop, Johnson with 10 tackles a week ago in the victory over the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Marcus taking the ball up the middle. There's nothing there. He has to try to take it outside, and the pursuit comes in from the Browns. The Browns have really been playing the run quite well, and uh, if they could control the Oak, <laughs> yeah, the Raider running attack, I almost said it, the running attack, they can get into a good zone coverage to help on the deep pass. It's a third down and one. And a first down picked up by Scrahan. Mike Johnson on the stop. And it's a 12-yard pass play on the 11th play of the drive. It has been all Raiders thus far in this first quarter. Cleveland player is down. That is Bob Golick. Uh, check that. Carl Hairston. Carl Hairston, who celebrated his 35th birthday during the course of the week. And then uh, celebrated by going 40 yards on a uh, lateral off an interception last week that uh, certainly got the attention of Browns players throughout the week. Especially the latter part of that run, he started picking those legs up, picking the feet up high, and kind of tightrope walking the sidelines. It was a pretty funny sight. Teammates say he is the most inspirational player on the team in his 12th year out of Maryland Eastern Shore, Carl Hashton. Come on, Carl, you can get on up, buddy. This certainly isn't a funny sight. This is one of the two bad things about professional football to me, losing and getting hurt. Looks like Big Carl's moving all right. I got a feeling he'll be back in there. An official timeout and a reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. Mark Wilson has opened up four out of four for 39 yards. You think he'll be re-signed for next year? What will the Raiders do about the quarterback situation? I think they're going to wait and see for a while. Uh, Wilson's contract is up at the end of this season, but he's still better than a lot of quarterbacks around the NFL. They're not going to find many guys better than Mark Wilson uh, uh, that can take his place, whether he is here next year or not. They have plenty of time to make that decision. Dave Pizzuli has come on for Carl Haston, who left just a moment ago. First down at the Cleveland 24. Here is Allen looking for the hole. And Pizzuli closed it up. Dave Pizzuli in his fifth year out of Pittsburgh. Teammates call him the garbage man because he's always around coming up uh, with the sack. Here's Haston right back. Apparently he's all right. Now, I know uh, the Raiders have moved the ball here in the first quarter, but that last play is any indication of what we're to see. The defensive line of the Browns uh, are controlling the line of scrimmage right now. It is a second and ten from the 24. And now on the slant. Three-yard pickup for Allen. The free safety, Felix Wright, came up to make the stop. And we have seven minutes remaining. And this uh, first quarter of the Browns yet to touch the ball on offense. Yeah, Felix Wright came up fast to stop Marcus Allen. Marcus gets these extra yards. You know, a lot of backs, they get out there and they get tackled without fighting for that extra two or three yards. Marcus is so quick at hitting the hole and making cuts that Felix Wright doesn't come up and feel quickly here as he does very nicely. And Marcus has a big gainer. Third and seven of the 21. Wilson getting the time. And it is incomplete, intended for Doki Williams. Eddie Field on the coverage. And the field goal unit coming on, Chris Barr. And the fourth and seven. Will attempt the field goal, 17 out of 25 this season. Last week hit from 23, missed from 32. This a 39-yard attempt. Chris Barr today going in a family battle with Matt Barr, the Cleveland Browns kicker. And it is put right through. 39-yard field goal for Chris Barr in his 12th year out of Penn State. And the
the Raiders take a 3 nothing lead with 6.24 remaining in this first quarter. So the Raiders now will kick off to the Cleveland Browns. What a beautiful day here in Los Angeles. It did rain throughout the week. They had the monsoon conditions, I'm told, uh, earlier this week. In fact, there was the hope on uh, the part of the Raiders that Bo Jackson, if the field uh, would be in good condition as it is here today, would play. But apparently they felt the uh, sprained ankle uh, was not worth risking, and they are hoping that he will play in the finale next week. You know, I still find it uh, weird to accept. I'm from Western Pennsylvania. Marv, you're New York. Uh, we have the people back in Cleveland watching this game. Here we are a week away from Christmas, and uh, this weather out here, 70 degrees, sun and shining, you know, it's kind of difficult for me to get into the Christmas mood, you know, being surrounded by all the sunshine and lack of snow. Joe, you always had a good imagination, though. Well, I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> you look at our picture now and uh, yes. let the imagination run away with you. <laughs> Joe. It's Christmas time, that's right. Barr put that gentle draw on that last field goal. Did you know that? He's quite a golfer. He's down around a three or four handicap, and that's a mighty fine player. That last field goal just did get inside the right upright. The Raiders using eight minutes and 36 seconds on a 14-play drive, and Chris Barr getting set to kick it off to the combination of Glenn Young, Reggie Langhorn, Herman Fontenot, and this is Young on the return. Glenn Young, who's had an outstanding year, averaging about 23 yards per kickoff return, was stopped by the backup tight end, Andy Parker. So Bernie Kozar and the offensive unit on the field. Bernie, the highest-rated quarterback in the AFC going into today. Ernest Miner and Kevin Mack have bounced back with very solid seasons. And Langhorn, Slaughter, and Newsom are the receivers. Mike Babb anchors that offensive line. Paul Farron of left tackle taking over for the end of Ricky Boulder. First out of the 27 for the Browns. The Raiders lead it by the score of 3 0. And Kozar puts it up. Very first play. Looking for Webster Slaughter. And a flag throw. Sam Seal, who was called for two pass interference penalties a week ago, is the man once again. There he is in his fourth season out of Western State in Colorado, replacing the injured All Pro Mike Haynes. The Raiders' defense sorely missed Mike Hayes and Lester Hayes, for that matter. Interference by the defense. First down. Sam Steele appears to have good position at the end of this play, but actually he was beaten a couple of yards. And the ball is slightly underthrown, so Seal ends up running into Slaughter. Slaughter had the edge. He ran right by him from the line of scrimmage. You mentioned Lester Hayes, uh, who was inactive today. He has been very active verbally. He called <laughs> Webster Slaughter a <laughs> sissy, and that was the nicest thing he said about him <laughs> during the course of the week. That's a 39-yard penalty. First down for Cleveland at the Raider. 34-yard line. Here's Kevin Mack. Picked up four. It'll be a second down and six. Malcolm Taylor, the nose tackle on the stop. Howie Long, Sean Jones, Malcolm Taylor up front. Linebackers, Jerry Robinson has made the successful uh, switch inside. It's King, Millen, Robinson, and Martin. And uh, the secondary with Turan McElroy Seal and Washington McElroy and Turan having super season. Second down play, and it's Ernest Miner for the short pickup. Vance of three, and there is Lester Hayes. And he is uh, particularly unhappy that he's not been able to go against Webster Slaughter, who also, it should be pointed out, likes, likes to talk. Hayes said that the Slaughter thinks he's a five foot ten version of King Kong. He says he's a cocky juvenile. <laughs> that's a lot of talk going from a guy that's down, not Sammy. playing right now. It's a third down and three at the Raider 27. Raiders three and the Browns nothing. 450 to go in this first quarter. Big rush but goes are completed to Fontenot. And Fontenot inside the five. 
25-yard pass play. So the Browns for the first and goal. James Davis, the extra defensive back on the tackle of Fontenot. Kozar doesn't look quick, but he feels the pressure, and he releases the ball underneath the rush. A fine catch by Fontenot. He hasn't been playing a great deal this season because Byron's been doing such a fine job. You'll see some excellent pass protection with the exception of Howie Long getting around Babb and nearly getting to Bernie Kozar. Bernie Kozar really blossomed last year when Cleveland diversified that, that uh, offensive alignment. First and goal from the two, and Kozar throws for the touchdown. Ernest Byer getting in. Doing it in front of Stacy Turan. And the Browns take a 6-3 lead at the key play, that interference call on the quarterback, Sam Seal. That cost 39 yards. And the key to this play was Biner being able to get out of the backfield so quickly. He just has the angle here. Watch him take the angle, and Kozar throws the perfect pass. There's no way Turan could defend against that pass. You can't let Biner out of the backfield that cleanly and that quickly and expect to cover him in the flat for only a two-yard uh, touchdown or try to protect two yards. And here's Chris's younger brother, Matt Barr, putting it through. Matt Barr reactivated last week. He's been out with a, a knee injury. Came off for the rookie, Jeff Jager, as the Browns revamped their kicking game. And here's the interference call on sealed number 43 as he runs into Webster Slaughter. Slaughter had him beaten. For the deep bomb, the ball was slightly underthrown, and Seal made a recovery, but he didn't foul Webster. So that's 16 consecutive games that Bernie Kozar has thrown a touchdown, and this a quickie drive off that interference penalty. Four plays, 73 yards. And the Browns take a 7-3 lead with just under four minutes to go in this first quarter. Bernie Kozar... Doesn't knock you over with his style, but he reads defenses so well and avoids interceptions. You know, his style was a blessing on that last pass. He actually threw that thing a little lower, almost sidearm, uh, a little lower than three quarters under Howie Long's defensive rush. So that time, it was uh, uh, a plus that he has this kind of a sidearm delivery. Watch him. He'll get pressure. Whoa, this is the touchdown. Excuse me. I was talking about the pass to Fontenot. Here he just does everything right. It's easier to talk about the things Bernie Kozar doesn't do well as it is to talk about the things that he does right. His footwork and his uh, uh, passing motion are the only two flaws I see mechanically in this man. And we would like to welcome those of you who have been watching Pittsburgh and Houston here in Los Angeles. The Browns have just taken a 7-3 lead on Raiders, Marv Albert with Joe Namath from the Coliseum in L.A. Stephon Adams on the return. Makes it across the 25-yard line. Well, the Houston Oilers go to 8-6 and six as they knock off the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are now 8-6. 24-16, and six, 24 and 16, and the Oilers are still alive. Nick Miller, backup linebacker, made the tackle for the uh, Cleveland Browns. The Browns today are playing for home field advantage if they make the playoffs. They must beat Pittsburgh next week, next Saturday afternoon in Pittsburgh to win the AFC Central. And they have really had their problems at Three Rivers in Pittsburgh. Marcus Allen, Steve Strahan on the running backs. First down for the 25 as Wilson goes sideline incomplete. Intended for James Lofton. That's the first time that he has looked for Lofton. Hanford Dixon, the right corner on the coverage. Yeah, Hanford Dixon was on the coverage, but he was about three or four yards off Lofton. He certainly respects Lofton's speed. The ball is just high and away. If, if the pass is down, Lofton has a good reception. It's uh, actually a catchable pass. This is the kind of pass you'd expect Lofton to be able to pull down. Talking about the uh, Raider quarterback situation, Jim Plunkett. 40 years old now, and it was thought that this would be his uh, finale. He's he's out. Uh, he's been injured, but he says now he does want to try it for one more year next season. Marcus Allen with a, a good second effort and picked up four on the play. Carl Hairston, the right defensive end, made the stop. 
Now, this is the kind of move we uh, alluded to earlier. You'll see Allen trying to get outside. He'll stop and then cut back. Sam Clancy, number 91, has the outside cut off along with Pizzoli. Marcus finds that little hole, ducks underneath, and he's able to turn a bad play into a positive play and gain some yardage. It is a third down and five. Raiders go with Lofton, Hester, and Williams. As they line up in a slot right. Intended for Allen. And a penalty flag is down. Referee today is Rick Casher. The hole against the Raiders. Holding number 78 on the offense. That penalty is declined. It'll be fourth down. A hold against the rookie John Clay. On the left side of your screen, you see him holding Al Baker. Well, actually, he gets run over by the mass. <laughs> they have high hopes for number 78, John Clay, number one draft choice. Art Shell uh, said, hey, listen, this kid is so good. I like him as a man and as a player. Let's give him my number. Uh, Art Shell, of course, made uh, eight Pro Bowls with the Raiders. He coaches their offensive line now, and he has very high hopes for this young man, John Clay. And here is Stan Talley punting to Gerald McNeil. And Talley and the Raiders get the roll. Eddie Anderson covering it up. It's a 47-yard punt for Talley, the man who took over for one of the all-time greats, Ray Guy. And the Browns will go back to the offense from their 24-yard line. They lead it by the score of 7-3. to three. Two and a half minutes remaining in this first quarter. Ernest Miner, Kevin Mack on the running backs. Miner is out as a flanker at the near side. So Mack is the lone setback. On the handoff, went for three. And we have some uh, fisticuffs. There's a face mask and then a square off. not just the Raiders and their style of football, but it seems over the years, every time they play, I see some kind of fisticuffs going on. We've got personal fouls for face pass, number 84 on the Raiders, number 75 on the Browns. They offset and they stuck it out. Well, the Browns have always, excuse me, the Raiders have always been an excellent football team or close to it, but even in the years when when they weren't as strong as they normally are, you still hated to play against these guys. You knew physically you're going to take a beating. It's going to be a tough game for you. They've always had those kind of tough players. Here you see number 26, Pro Bowl safety, Van McElroy kind of getting into it a bit with Reggie Langhorn. And uh, oh boy, well, you know, you can't hurt each other with these helmets on and throwing the jabs. They're just wasting your time out there. That was Webster Slaughter who got involved. But he and Howie Long were called on the penalty for catching reversing the numbers. It is a second and seven from the uh, 27. And penalty flags are thrown. Play was blown dead. penalties a team going to the playoffs and wanting to get in the playoffs can't make they can't make them and win games you have to eliminate the mental errors especially this time of the season I know these mental errors just tear Marty Schottenheimer apart here you have to keep from beating yourself and mental errors is one of the major reasons you lose football games and off that error they mark it back to a second and 12 at the 22 yard line minute 45 remaining in the first quarter. The Browns with a 7-3 lead. Raiders have owned the football for most of this quarter, but had to settle for a field goal. And 
And the Browns helped by that pass interference on the right corner, Sam Seal, able to put up uh, seven points within four plays. Off the draw, a call for Ernest Biner. Ron Martin, the outside linebacker on the stop, a seven-yard advance. Draw play right up the middle. You see the gap, the two linemen both rush up field, and we see a fine trap block by number 74, Ferret. The left tackle really got downfield to throw a good trap block that time. You don't see good trap blocking by offensive tackles very often. They're too big. They don't have that good lateral movement. Ferret does. It is a third down and five. 45 seconds left in this first quarter. Ozar throwing sideline and a flag is down again. Pass intended for Biter. So this has certainly been a whistle happy first quarter. It's called against the Raiders. Washington, the left quarterback. Man who has replaced the injured Lester Hayes called on the penalty. So three now assessed on the Raiders, two on the Browns. Now Washington got isolated with Reggie Langhorn that time, and Langhorn put a nice move on him and broke to the inside. And when he did, Lionel, or Washington just uh, grabbed him. And Kozar has a first down at the Cleveland 34, 35 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Here's Mack. Picked up a yard on the play, and again flags thrown, and again some extracurricular action. Robinson and Taylor on the stop, and Reggie Langhorn is constantly in the midst of it. Yes, and so is Lionel. Number 48 on the defense, first down. Lionel Washington is the man called. And so is Lionel Washington. They're trying to establish uh, their territory and show what kind of a mood, a tough move they're in out there, but you're not gonna intimidate the, the Cleveland Browns. They're too good, a, too good a team. They have too many good players to get intimidated. like to welcome those of you who have been watching Seattle and Chicago Walter Payton's final home game as the Bears were beaten by Seattle 34 21 so the Bears walloped by San Francisco last uh, Monday night and lose again here today Marv Albert and Joe Namath from the Coliseum in Los Angeles were winding down in the first quarter the Rams rather the uh, Browns leading the Raiders by the score of seven to three and it's a first down from midfield Brian Brennan with his first reception picked up seven. Lionel Washington on the stop as this first quarter comes to a close. So at the end of one, the Browns seven, the Raiders three. We'll be back here in Los Angeles in just a moment. Browns with a record of eight and five coming off the victory over Cincinnati last week the Raiders five up and eight down they were beaten by the Kansas City Chiefs uh, last week Marty Schottenheimer the AFC coach of the year last season and took over Browns midway through the 84 season took over a one and seven team from Sam Bertigliano last year they went 12 and four taking the AFC Central and came within a game of the Super Bowl. Second down play for Cleveland. Ernest Binder stopped by the nose tackle Malcolm Taylor. Malcolm Taylor on the tackle. 
Short of a first down. It'll be a third and two for the Browns at the Raider 42-yard line. Last week against the Bengals, Ozar throwing a career-high 14 touchdowns again. No interceptions, and that has been the key with Bernie Kozar. Flag thrown. Brian Brennan on the reception. And has the first down inside the 25. 18-yard pass play. Rod Martin on the stop. Offside. Number 99 on the defense. That penalty is declined. First down. So it is Sean Jones, the right defensive end, called on the offside. And a Raider player shaken up. Free safety. Van McElroy. Fire again to the video board. Now a timeout called. It's Cleveland 7. Raiders 3. We'll be back in a moment. There are those who fervently believe that true perfection is found in the details. At the Bavarian Motor Works, we gave that belief a name. We call it the BMW 735i. Beautiful, to be sure. Yet perhaps the most beautiful thing about it is its spirit. Wait for something good to happen. Make it happen with the clean, masculine scent of English leather cologne. Some guys have what others want. Some guys have it all. English leather. Some guys have it all. This branch office automation project was a monster. I figured a good workout would help me work things out. At Hewlett-Packard, the only way we come up with something that isn't what everyone else would do is to keep asking those questions. This is Bob Costas in New York. Jack Trudeau is back at quarterback for Indianapolis. He unloads this 42-yarder to Bill Brooks, who beats Elvis Toast Patterson. And the Chargers and Colts are now tied at 7 in the second. Buffalo lost earlier, so if the Colts win this one and Miami loses to the Redskins tonight, Indy's alone in first place in the AFC East with a week left. Raiders free safety Van McElroy shaken up a moment ago. Mike Haynes, injured Raider. Behind him, Eddie Anderson, one of the replacement players out of Fort Valley State, second-year player, replacing McElroy at the safety position. First down from the 24. Kozar off the roll, able to complete. Webster Slaughter short of the first down. The right corner, Sam Seal on the stop. An advance of eight. Bernie Kozar does so many things well. Here he's on the run, and he throws a perfect pass across there. And he had to get the ball out because Howie Long was all over. People have been saying, where's Howie Long been this season? Where's Howie Long been? Statistically, he hasn't had the numbers, but he usually has two guys assigned to him. That time, only one, and he put pressure on Kozar, but Bernie delivered. They're calling it a second and three. So make it pick up of seven. Kozar is five for five, 58 yards. Out of bounds. It is incomplete. Today's game is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, phone your nearest BMW dealer. By Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. And by Isotoner brand men's gloves. Take care of the hands that take care of you. 
It is a third down and three for the Browns at the Raiders 17. We're early second quarter. The Browns seven, the Raiders three. And Bozar, how does bad Webster slaughter? And he has a first and goal inside the 10. Again, the short pass working to perfection. Another eight-yard pickup. Sam Seal made the stop. But what happened? Webster Slaughter read the blitz. Bernie Kozar read the safety blitz. Turan, number 30, is coming up the middle, and he nearly comes clean on the left side of your screen. And Bernie Kozar reads it along with Webster Slaughter. Slaughter has a good reception. All Slaughter does is when he sees that safety leave that spot, he'll come off the line of scrimmage and slant over the middle, just get inside position on Seal, as he just did. Bernie Kozar is the type of quarterback who rarely has a bad game twice against the same team. Van McElroy heading to the uh, locker room. And he did not have a good one last year at the Coliseum here against the uh, Raiders. And I'm told he worked harder and longer during the course of practice uh, this week. And Kozar certainly off to a strong start. No one would deny that the Japanese are aficionados of fine machinery. So when they reach that station in life when they can afford really fine machinery, guess what they buy? A car from Germany called the BMW 325i making BMW last year's number one selling luxury import in Japan. Like a top-down neon drive-in, like a Sugar Ray Express, like made in the shade, like making the grade, like the cold of the old Wild West. Like Larry, Moe, and Curly, fast cars and fancy shoes, like Buffalo Bob and a lucky dog And like cats who sing the blues I'm an American original The first draft beer in a can Tap an ice cold Coors With a friend of yours Put a fresh draft beer in your hand Brewery fresh draft beer in bottles and cans That's been Coors for over 25 years Taste the original today American original, the first draft beer in a can, tap an ice cold course with a friend of yours. Put a 12 ounce keg in your hand. The NFL plays here, Buffalo. Machine Gun Kelly leads an upstate stampede in their drive for the playoffs. The Bills haven't been there since 1981. The NFL plays here, Philadelphia. But the Eagles aren't grounded yet. They're ready and anxious to play the spoiler. The Bills battle the Eagles plus regional action. It all starts with NFL Live. Well, with Houston knocking off Pittsburgh earlier today, it comes down to this. If Cleveland wins at Pittsburgh next Saturday, they win the AFC Central. The Browns in front of the Raiders here, 7-3. We're early second quarter. Browns first and goal from the nine. Again, the flag as Kozar throws for the touchdown. Nine-yard touchdown pass to Clarence Weathers, who beat Any Sam Seal, but the penalty against the Browns, so they will bring it back. Earlier, we alluded to the mental errors that can hurt a team, not knowing your snap count, jumping off sides, forgetting what play it is. These are the kind of things that drive coaches nuts and really, in the stretch run, force teams to lose for the major reasons the team's losing game. Weathers put a beautiful move down that last time on the inside, jumped outside, and Kozar was right there with the ball, but uh, someone forgot to stay on side. Didn't pick up the number from the uh, Red Cashin announcement. But it does set it back to a first and goal now from the 14-yard line. Short set up by Kozar through the bullet to Brian Brennan. It's a touchdown saving tackle by Lionel Washington. 12-yard play. It'll be a second and goal inside the three. Kozar's at his sharpest. He hasn't missed a receiver yet. 
been practicing back there in Cleveland and experienced those wind conditions and all that cold weather. He comes out here in the sunshine, and he is hot. And he's hit seven out of eight. Of course, he is used to the uh, sunshine from his days at the University of Miami. It'll be a second and goal inside the three. That was stopped, stacked up. Kevin Mack comes off a career day, 133 yards last week against Cincinnati, ran for a touchdown and caught a touchdown. This time was bottled up. Yeah, well, Howie Long, number 75, just pushed Cody Risen back into the backfield in the pursuit. The rest of the Raiders just made a big pile there. There wasn't any place to go. There is Howie Long, number 75. He admits he has not had one of his banner all pro years, but he feels he's received some unfair criticism, particularly from broadcasters around the country. Those are throwing, and it is broken up. Eddie Anderson, the man who replaced the injured Van McElroy at free safety, got a piece of it. It was intended for the tight end, Derek Tinnell. Eddie Anderson just makes a good play. It's a nice fake. The ball is out in front in good shape here, but Anderson gets a hand on it. That's just excellent coverage. And the field goal unit checks in. This will be a 20-yard attempt by Matt Barr, who last week in his first game back hit from 27 against Cincinnati. The rookie Jeff Jager placed on the inactive list. They wanted the experience of Barr down the stretch, and Barr has provided a 10-3 lead for Cleveland. We'll be back after these messages. Just east of the Canadian Rockies is a place where people will go faster and fly farther than ever before. The place is Calgary, home of the 1988 Winter Olympics, where a lifetime of work will be measured in seconds. But if you go, bring your camera and your visa card, because the Olympics don't take place all the time, and this time, the Olympics don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. I was knocking my head against this networking project. At Hewlett Packard, you just don't throw a bunch of hardware and software at the problem. Suddenly, I guess if you ask enough questions... Hey, Sandy! You get some pretty good answers. Sandy, what if we integrate... Are you listening? Lafitte, Louisiana, and old Milwaukee boats mean something great to these guys. Lafitte means flat bottom boat racing and a Cajun feast that'll set your mouth on fire. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden, old Milwaukee life. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place and old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee life. It doesn't get any better than this. The Browns going 13 plays, 74 yards, and the difference in this ball game with the Browns leading the Raiders now 10-3 has been the quarterback, Lenny Kozar. Oh, Kozar has a missed the receiver. Wilson has missed a few guys that were open, and those are the plays that stopped the drives, actually. And we're set for the kickoff, sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. Woods and Mueller are back. And this is Vance Mueller. Breaking tackles. Good return by Mueller, the second-year man from Occidental. He went 24 yards on the return. Lucius Sanford got him out of bounds. And so the L.A. Raiders now back to the offense. And we'll be back here at the Coliseum in a moment. I don't go out there to think about how a customer can afford more computing power or integrate workstations. But sometimes, out of nowhere, it happens. Seems to be the way at Hewlett Packard. The point is to keep asking the right questions. Rich, Jerry, what if on that automotive project... 
I have a very long Christmas shopping list. A whole football team that my career depends on. But my shopping is easy because they let me know exactly what they want. Isotoner gloves for men. I buy isotoners for the big guys and the super fast little guys and everyone in between. <laughs> because isotoners fit them all. So this Christmas, take care of the hands that take care of you <laughs> with isotoner gloves. Way to go, Dan. Thanks a lot. Lady Stetson, you're free playing in the big leagues. Country proud with a fragrance all your own. Lady Stetson, an exciting blend of contrasts, like America itself. Lady Stetson. Open a can of Chunky and you could go to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii in the Chunky Sweepstakes. Next time you take care of a mean appetite, look under the specially marked lid and you just might be a winner. I'm going to the Pro Bowl. This is Bob Costas in New York. The Saints run their winning streak to eight. Cincinnati blows another one. They led. The Bengals did 24-3. The Saints close with 38 unanswered points, including this Buford Jordan eight-yard run in the fourth quarter to take their record to 11-3 with a 41-24 win at Cincy. Back out to Mar. All right, Bob, and there's Bo Jackson sitting it out today. You think he should work on his neck muscles a little, Joe? <laughs> Get a little bulk in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Build up that chest and those back muscles, too. So with uh, Bo sitting out, it's Marcus Allen and Steve Strahan on the backfield. And Wilson able to complete. Strahan, a three-year player from Boston College. Picked up 14 for the first down. Clay Matthews on the stop. Two very good things for the Raiders on that play. One, the pass protection. Wilson wanted to get the ball to Christensen, his tight end. He was covered. He had the time to come off Christensen and get to Strahan. Two big pluses for the Raider offense. And the Raiders now first down from their 43. The Browns 10 and the Raiders 3. Marcus Allen picked up a couple out to the 45-yard line. Getting back to the subject of Bo Jackson, he insists that he will be playing baseball years after he has finished with football. In fact, he plans to return to Auburn and work out in baseball, supervised by Auburn uh, baseball coach Hal Beard, who happened to be a one-time roommate of uh, John Wathen, the manager of the uh, Kansas City Royals, and he says he'll be he'll be a baseball player. All right, Wilson under pressure, able to get it away, and it was nearly intercepted. The pass intended for Lofton. Minifield had a shot at it. Nearly intercepted by Minifield, and nearly an outstanding play by Mark Wilson. If he has the ball out in front a little more, it's complete. Minifield nearly gets the, the six-point interception. Clay Matthews, 57, comes clean, but he's picked up nicely. I don't know. It's almost an in-the-grasp call by Harrison there. We've seen worse in-the-grasp calls than this made during the season. And here's the near interception by 31 Minifield. What an effort. Yes, Carl Hairston was right on the scene. Third down and eight from the 45. And again the pressure, and this time the sack is registered. Sam Clancy, the six foot seven, 260 pounder out of the University of Pittsburgh, coming up with his second sack of the year. Sam Clancy filling in for the injured Reggie Camp, who incidentally might return next week. On the right side of your screen, number 91, Sam Clancy gets around Lewis to make the sack. You know, the very first pass that was incomplete thrown by Wilson, I heard some boos. These people can't wait to get on Mark Wilson's case. Because he was sacked this last play, we heard a chorus of boos. It wasn't because the lineman was beaten. It was because Wilson got caught with the football. They don't like Wilson here in Los Angeles. And there's the ice cube, Jerry McNeil, awaiting the punt from Stan Talley. That sack producing a loss of 14. McNeil to the 25. And returns across the 30-yard line. Andy Parker making the stop. 44-yard punt and a 16-yard return. The Browns 10, the Raiders 3. We'll be right back. I hate having my picture taken. But ever since Beaky got the newest Tommy Automatic Nikon One Touch, he hasn't put it down. This Nikon has sharper focus, a really smart, smart flash, even a five-year lithium battery. But the best part is that I got to come here for half price.
price on Pan Am. Buy a one-touch and a companion flies half price on Pan Am, even to Europe. Ooh, Pinky hasn't taken a bad picture of me yet. Saturday, the NFL plays here when the Browns battle the Steelers. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live. There's Van McElroy back in action. He hurt his rib earlier this first half. X-rays came out negative, and he is back. So Eddie Anderson to the sideline. Van McElroy having a Pro Bowl season. Made it uh, in 83 and 84 and has been outstanding. So the Cleveland Browns now first down with 8.50 remaining. In this first half, they start out from their 33-yard line. Bullseye uh, throws it up on first down once again. It is looking for Webster Slaughter. Seal and McElroy on the coverage of Slaughter. Cleveland's offense certainly isn't shy about putting the ball over top and going long. Now the Raiders have a couple of backup cornerbacks playing in Seal in Washington, and obviously uh, the Browns want to take advantage of that. The other thing is the Raiders are putting four defensive linemen in the game on first down, so rather than run at it, Cleveland's been trying to throw on first down. Kozar is seven for ten now, 78 yards, and now they go to the run. Short pickup for Kevin Mack. Malcolm Taylor on the tackle. Malcolm Taylor, the uh, nose tackle on the stop. Uh, Kevin Mack had problems last year with a shoulder. Still ran for 665 yards. Scored 10 touchdowns. Came on strong at the end of the season. Back in 85, he and Ernest Biner combined to form only the third NFL backfield to produce uh, two 1,000-yard rushers. Third down eight. At the 35. And it is completed to Clarence Weathers for the first down. Ron Fellows, the nickelback, made the stop a 13-yard pass play. On the right side of your screen, Clarence Weathers is just going to run an out pattern. This is the second time he's been able to beat Ron Fellows. Once it was called back because of a penalty, Fellows, of course, was starting last week for Lionel Washington, but Washington's availability this week uh, forces Fellows to play in the nickel-dime coverage. In fact, Fellows started the last couple of games. One time, Dallas Cowboy, Ron Fellows. And the Browns with a first down from their 47. A short set by Kozar completes to Slaughter. Webster Slaughter putting a move on Sam Seal and picked up 23 yards. Once again, the Raiders' intentions are to stop the running game. They isolate Seal out here one-on-one -on -one with Webster Slaughter and the missed tackle by Seal allows Slaughter to gain extra yardage. I like the way Cleveland's attacking this four-man front. They're not shy about passing the football on first down see so many teams want to establish the run you know and go to the pass on second and third down <laughs> Schottenheimer and Fonte offense is geared to throw the ball anytime and often and Kozar opened up by coming out throwing and it has worked another first down for the Browns this time inside the Raider 30 Miner off the left side picked up six 
Malcolm Teller, the uh, nose tackle on the stop. We've seen a bit of uh, Bill Pickell here on the first half, who has been uh, sitting it out because of an ankle injury, but uh, Pickell has seen some action. You see Ernest Biner having his difficulties. Mm. A major key to the offense, the Brown offense is number 44, Biner. Has a pretty good hold to hit here. Gained some yardage, but I can't tell what he injured on the play. Halfway through the second quarter, we'll take a timeout with the Browns in front of the Raiders by the score of 10-3. The Achievers, sponsored by the U.S. Army. San Diego teammates Dan Fouts and Kellen Winslow work so well together, often they don't even have to talk. I can remember a lot of times when Dan and I just made eye contact and we knew we, what each other were thinking. Fouts and Winslow have teamed up to become one of the most lethal passing combinations in football. Well, it's like the Army. You just don't win a battle by yourself. I don't care what kind of day you've had. Out on the football field, you've got to work together. A ranger never takes the easy way out. You're reaching deep inside you for things you've never known. Go! That's why getting into the rangers is tough, and the training is tough. Be all that you can be. So it makes me feel like I'm part of something really special. Be all that you can be. And I'm not the only one. Find your future in the army. Here's something everyone worries about when flying, whether their carry-on luggage will fit. Could you put this in the overhead compartment? <laughs> How about under the seat? <laughs> so at Samsonite, we've designed carry-ons you truly can carry on, like our garment bag and suitcase in one, packed with features that make things easier to pack. At Samsonite, we'll never leave you holding the bag, proving once again that our strengths are legendary. To go, Ernest Biner to the sideline. Apparently, had the wind knocked out of him, but he's all right. What a powerful combination! These two have been Kevin Mack, Ernest Biner, Herman Fontenot has replaced Ernest Biner now for the second down and five at the Raider 24. Seven minutes to go in the second quarter. The Browns 10, the Raiders three. As Kozon completes again. Webster Slaughter at his forward progress stop. Picked up nine and another Cleveland first down. Sam Seal on the coverage. We've been talking about all the difficulties. The Raider cornerbacks uh, have been experienced. What do you do to uh, ward off uh, the problems that the cornerbacks have been having? Well, you have to give them help with your safeties to do that, to give them zone coverage, inside help, outside help, or deep help. It takes away from the safety support on the running game. So their run defense isn't going to be as good if they give the corners help. And right now the pass uh, coverage isn't good because they're trying to stop the Cleveland run game. It is a first down at the 15. It's Biner. What a block. And what a run off the huge hole by Biner. He went 15 yards for the score. So apparently Ernest Biner is just fine after he had the win knocked out of him. And he put a move on Van McElroy that you don't see very many big men uh, that can do it. Look at his cut. Van McElroy, the all-pro safety, isn't used to seeing a man Biner's size be able to cut that crisply, that sharply, that fast. Number 61, the center, Babb, just does a terrific job of Pikel blocking him out of the way, and the rest of it is Byron. And a penalty marker is down. So the call against Rock Fellows, defensive back, as the Cleveland Browns take a 17-3 lead on the Los Angeles Raiders. Cleveland, the number one scoring team in the AFC, and they have also allowed the fewest points in the NFL going into today's play, a very nice combination. 
Now we'll see with the 17 to 3 lead by Cleveland. We'll see how badly the Raiders want to play today. We have a lot of football time left. Uh, the Raiders are down. We'll just see how much pride they have and uh, how deep down they want to dig to end this season on an up note, a positive note. One point, the Raiders lost seven in a row, their longest losing streak since 1962. They opened up at 3 0. The replacement team then lost two straight, so during the strike, they were 1 and 2. The regulars came back and dropped five in a row. Raiders then won two of three. The two wins impressive over Seattle and Buffalo, and they were beaten uh, last week by Kansas City. It's a good reason for those five losses in a row, though, Marv. You see, the Raiders are putting together an offensive line. They have Brian Holloway, a veteran, but his first season here with the Raiders. They have the rookie John Clay at tackle. They had some injuries to that offensive line. Now, the same time they're trying to put the line together, they were working in a new quarterback, Rusty Hilger. It's very difficult to build an offensive line and work in a new young quarterback at the same time. You end up losing five straight, seven straight country plays the game. And the Raiders open up uh, the season by thinking in terms of Hilger as their number one quarterback. It did not work out in that matter. Raiders will start out from their 20-yard line. Six minutes to go in this first half. And the Browns leading it by the score of 17-3. Here is Mark Wilson, who does not have a completion to a wide receiver. All five of his completed passes have been to running backs. And I don't know how uh, long the Raiders will be patient with Mark Wilson, even today. You know, if he doesn't get things going, they won't, they won't hesitate to put Rusty Hilger in the game. Who certainly had his ups and downs, the first round draft pick of the Raiders back in 1980. And Wilson looking, could not find anybody, and then went the short route. So out to the 25, Marcus Allen picked up five. Eddie Johnson, the inside linebacker, on the stop. And Wilson keeps his cool here. He looks around for receivers. There's good coverage downfield by the Browns. And Wilson's able to get this ball out here at the last second to. Marcus Allen, who turns the play into a gainer, but that was good presence of mind by Mark Wilson. Good rush by Sam Clancy. It'll be a second and five at the 25. Marcus Allen. Short pickup. Carl Hairston on the stop. Hairston has played so well that his teammate Al Baker said of Carl that he could be the first player to collect a a Pro Bowl check and a Social Security check <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Carl Hairston, who celebrated his 35th birthday this past week. Because Al Bubba Baker also getting up there in, in age. He's a 10-year man. Third down and four from the 26. <laughs> Wilson running out of the pocket for the first down. And some more. 17-yard run. Yeah, that's right. The uh, free safety was right there as Wilson made that slide into third. Well, Wilson recognizes that it's man coverage. He sees the linebacker run out of the way right now. He knows that all the defenders are assigned to receivers and that he has enough room to get the first down. That's why he took the ball upfield. The difference between his own coverage and the man coverage allows the quarterback to take the ball upfield more quickly. Raiders first down from their 42. And it's a swing to Allen. Reaching out to the 48, picked up six. It will be a second and four. And players had to be separated. It has been testy since the uh, first quarter. The main eventers earlier were Van McElroy and Reggie Langhorn. Here are the later games, Indianapolis in front of San Diego, San Francisco 7-0 on Atlanta, and St. Louis and Tampa Bay are, are tied at 7. Earlier, the New England Patriots won, so they are very much in it. They can win next week, and if Indianapolis loses once, uh, the Patriots will win the AFC East. Penalty flag is thrown with uh, Marcus Allen. Getting across midfield. And it's against the Raiders. Holding number 39 on the offense. 
Steel first down. Steve Strahan. The other running back is uh, called for the hole. Well, that's what this offense of the Raiders misses, too. You see, with Bo Jackson out of there, they're missing the blocking ability of Marcus Allen being able to lead the way for Bo Jackson. They're missing Jackson's blocking ability. Strahan's a good back, but he is not Marcus Allen or Bo Jackson. And now they're missing Doki Williams. They're going to take a look at him. He strained his left knee. A completion to the tight end, Todd Christensen, for 11. And for Christensen, his first catch of the day. Christensen's probably the best tight end in the league at getting open without pushing off. He really takes the beating from the linebackers. Here you see him trying to get downfield. And <laughs> does he attract the crowd? His timing is good. He knows when to break underneath, and Wilson's right there with the pass. But Christensen can get away from the linebackers better than any other tight end in the league. And usually takes a pretty good pounding in the process. Short of the first down, it's a third down and three. Tended for Lofton. And Felix Wright and James Lofton involved in some pushing and shoving. Well, this is what we were talking about earlier. The difference in this game so far has been the quarterbacking. Kozar has been on target. Malone hasn't been consistent. Malone. Mark Wilson hasn't what been consistent. What a 40 All right. Well, they both wear black uniforms yes, to some degree, right? Black jerseys <laughs> yeah. or something. But Wilson hasn't been as sharp. Here he had Lofton wide open and overthrew the pass. If he gets the ball down, the Raiders still have the ball. Maybe some points. And here is Stan Talley. No punt from inside is uh, 35. The ice cube, Gerald McNeil, is back at his 10. And McNeil takes from his 15. Putting the speed on. Thirty-six yard punt and a twenty-seven yard return. The punter tally on the tackle. Gerald McNeil bothered by an ankle injury, but you'd never know it. You know, if there's a lack of enthusiasm at this time of the year in any phase of the game, it would be on the special teams, the covered teams. They had some guys down there, but they were to the right and to the left of McNeil. There wasn't anyone in front of his face. Running down the field on these special teams takes a great deal of desire and. That's the phase of the game that's really tested whenever you have a game that you don't need to win, when you're running out the, uh, I guess, the string, so to speak. And a first down for the Browns from their 42-yard line. Marv Albert, Joe Namath from the Coliseum of Los Angeles on a beautiful 70-degree afternoon. Goes on with a pick. Langhorn. Picked up 22 on the play. Stacy Turan, the strong safety on the tackle of Reggie Langhorn. What we're seeing is a team trying to get into the playoffs and simply outplaying the other team. Langhorn gets inside of number 48, Lionel Washington, and just outruns him. Kozar puts the ball right on target. Two minutes to go now in this first half. Cleveland. 17, the LA Raiders 3. We'll be right back. AT&T, the right choice. The comeback. It's one of the most exciting things to watch in sports. Which team made the greatest comeback in NFL history, coming from 28 points behind to win? The 57 Giants? The 73 Dallas Cowboys? Or the 1980 San Francisco 49ers? Which would you choose? AT&T comes through with an advanced telemarketing solution. When a trucker's down, he needs service fast. But where does he find help in the middle of nowhere? That's why Goodyear turned to AT&T. Now a trucker just calls 1-800 number to reach the nearest service outlet. So he can get back on the road in no time at all. And sometimes, even sooner. From equipment to networking, from computers to communications, AT&T is the right choice. In 1980, the 49ers scored 31 second-half points to rally past the Saints after trailing by four touchdowns. If you said the 49ers, you made the right choice. For all those confrontations with the unpredictable, BMW introduces the ultimate defense, the 535i. With an amazingly agile suspension, a computer-controlled engine that constantly adjusts to changing driving conditions, and an ingenious anti-lock braking system. 
the 535i. It lets those who take driving seriously peacefully coexist with those who don't. Kick off the new year with NBC at the Fiesta Bowl when Florida State faces Nebraska and the USC Trojans take on Michigan State in the Rose Bowl. Then it's the battle for the national championship as number one Oklahoma takes on number two Miami at the Orange Bowl. New Year's Day, college football's best and brightest are on NBC. Well, this game opened up with the Raiders controlling the ball the first seven and a half, eight minutes of the first quarter. But uh, since then, when the Raiders were were held and had to settle for a field goal. It has been all Cleveland sparked by Bernie Kozar. And Kozar now leading the drive again. First down of the Raider 37, the Browns 17, the Raiders 3. Two minutes to go. First half. Kozar getting the time and completing again. Webster Slaughter inside the 20 for another first down, an 18 yard pickup. And a flag has been thrown. It is in the Cleveland backfield. And Marty Schottenheimer not pleased. Holding number 74 on the offense, still first down. The left tackle, Paul Farron is called on the hole. Farron, the man who's taken over for the injured Ricky Bolden. On the left side of your screen, number 74 gets called for holding. Kozar has a good drop, but you see he's holding Mr. Jones. Jones kind of put that arm underneath uh, Farron's blocking arm, and Farron clamped down on him. They're going to call that, but they don't call that as often uh, this year as they have been calling it in the past. So it sets it back first down at 20 from the 47. Kozar throwing behind Brennan, and again, a marker is down. James Davis on the coverage of Brian Brennan. This time against the Raiders. Holding number 45 on the defense, first down. That's James Davis, defensive back in his sixth season out of Southern University. James grabs him right there, and just uh, that's enough to let the official know that it's not a fair play. You're not allowed to grab him, James. You know, I mentioned that they weren't calling these holding penalties on the offensive linemen as often as they have in the past. Howie Long especially has been noted for rushing the passer, and when he gets to a tackle, he slips his arm up underneath the pads of the offensive player. The officials are telling the defenders they put themselves in that position now, and they're not calling that holding on the offensive line when he's off. Now the Browns first down of the Raider, 42, but at 45 left in the first half. Goes on, released quickly. Oh, what a hit on Ernest Biner. My man, McElroy. Biner's all right. 20-yard pickup. Ernest Biner goes 5'10", a very solid 215 pounds. Rounds quickly to the uh, line of scrimmage, and it is McElroy who was shaken up. Well, he hurt those ribs earlier. Lionel Washington, his cornerback, ran into him earlier. This time he takes a good lick. Miner's a load, you know, and, uh, I, you know, we're seeing some beautiful passing from Koza. He has been right on target this first half. Let's take a timeout. Thank you. Dip into the holiday spirit with something new. McDonald's Holiday Chicken McNuggets in festive 9 and 20 piece packs. Tasty chunks of chicken and two new sauces. Tangy cranberry with a twist of orange and sweet apple spiced with cinnamon. Better chime in before holiday McNuggets are gone. Bernie Kozar off to a tremendous start, 12 for 16, 164 yards. But he's throwing the ball in the right place at the right time. So many of his passes are released before the receivers turned around looking for the ball. That takes good timing. It takes a lot of practice is what it does. And 
Bernie's obviously been working with his receivers after practice, during practice, to the point that he knows when to release the ball. The receivers know when to turn around. I mean, these are timing-type patterns, and, patterns, and uh, they're right on it today. And he's on a roll. Last week against Cincinnati, four touchdown passes thrown by Kozar. Herman Fontenot is back replacing Ernest Biner. And a first down at the Raider, 21, a minute 22 to go in the first half. And Kozar got the tie, flag down, pass intended for Fontenot, covered by Rod Martin. But another marker is down. Against the Browns. Well, you can't blame those offensive linemen for wanting to protect their quarterbacks. I know Anybody my guys. The hands, hands to the face. Number 63 of the offense, still first down. Guys, I used to play ball with, hey, if they were whipped on the play, they're going to try and save the quarterback any way they can, even if they have to tackle the, the defensive rusher. Number 63, rise and just gets run over. My goodness. And had that ball been a little bit farther inside, would have seen another completion. Ryzen call for the illegal use of hands. So it sets it to a first and 20 back at the uh, 31. Minute 15 left in the first half. Completed to Slaughter. So Webster Slaughter having a fine first half against the uh, quarterback. Sam Seal picked up another 15, his fifth catch of the day. Sure, he just fakes Seal out, gets on his inside, and it becomes a foot race running cross field. Brennan clears the area out, and Slaughter's wide open. Second down eight from the 19. And one of the, uh, I guess that may be the first drop we've seen today. Brian Brennan not able to hang on. James Davis on the coverage. For the first time, Kozar has been really off target. The ball should have been a little bit outside, but he had it inside, and Brennan couldn't quite get the handle on it. But again, it was another timing type play. The receiver wasn't turned around yet. Brennan just now gets turned around, and the ball's a little bit too far to his inside. Could give the, the credit to the defense that time, too. James Davis didn't want to let Brennan turn back inside. Good coverage. Third down, eight. From the 19. And it is incomplete. Intended for Langhorn. Now check that for uh, McNeil. Lionel Washington on the coverage with 44 seconds remaining in this first half. Coming up at halftime, all the scores and highlights. Look at the uh, very complex playoff picture. Bob Costas, NFL Live. Joe, you were going to run down all the possibilities. Ah, let's Bob do it. <laughs> what the heck? 37-yard field goal attempt from Matt Barr. No good. And hit the, uh, the upright. So Barr not able to hit. He doesn't quite have the draw that his brother Chris has on the ball. If you recall, Chris made his first one just inside that upright. And Matt's ball just hung to the outside that time, hit the upright. Earlier, he hit from 20 yards away to extend to a 10-3 lead, and now missed from 39 yards. So with 40 seconds remaining in this first half, the Raiders take over at their 20-yard line. Wilson goes the short route. Throw to the uh, first down with 34 seconds to go. The clock stopped, picked up six. Second down and four. Marcus Allen, two years ago, led the NFL in rushing with 1,700 yards. He can run, catch, throw, block, and as a couple of teammates say, also uh, looks good in the lobby after the game. <laughs> that is the complete player. Second down and three from the 27th. Wilson in trouble. And he just throws it away. And the Browns looking for a call. No receiver in sight. 
But no flag down. Good play by number 78, Carl Harrison, putting pressure on Wilson, and it was a good play on Mark Wilson's behalf to find an area of the field to get rid of the ball to avoid the loss. Wilson can't find a receiver. You see 78, Carl Harrison in pursuit along with Al Baker, 60, and uh, there's no place for Wilson to go. He does the right thing here. Third down play with 27 seconds remaining of the half. Are hearing it from the crowd as uh, Marcus Allen takes it across the uh, 30. And a timeout has been called. Marcus Allen is down. Marcus taking the ball outside. It appeared he hurt his left side, uh, either his left leg or let's watch the left side of his body here as he hits the ground. Right on the elbow. Is he a tough guy or what? Look at Marcus. He bounces right up, huh? Oops. I don't know how these running backs could do it. I used to watch these guys on a Monday morning after a game. I could barely get out of bed, and I was just a quarterback. I only got hit a few times. So well, that's another story. Wait a second. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> but I mean, these running backs play in and play out. They're either blocking or they're, or they're, or they're getting hit, man. They, they must feel awful the day after a game. Down to 22 seconds remaining in this first half as Vance Bueller has come on, replacing Marcus Allen. Raiders from across their 30. And Wilson again throws it and completes the Vance Mueller. 15 seconds to go in the half. Mark Hopper of the extra defensive back on the coverage. 13 yard pass play. There's Vance Mueller, fourth round draft pick last season. The problem with Wilson has been his inconsistency. Here you see him turn around, run to his left, and throw a perfect pass, you know, and he has a receiver open in loft in a while ago and misses him. Wilson's just been inconsistent from season to season. And penalty flags being tossed as Wilson again sees everyone covered. And fortunate that he was not intercepted. Flags are down with seven seconds remaining. In the hand. Completing his case, Dave Pizzuli, the backup nose tackle, is uh, against the Browns. Well, with seven seconds left, there's not much. Uh, the Raiders can do except go downtown, I would think, even if they complete a pass. If, uh, well, they could complete an out for 10, 15 yards, maybe in six seconds, but that's too close. That's cutting it too close. I think they're going to have to go for the long ball in the next play. Holding number 37 on the defense. That penalty is declined. Offside, number 72 on the defense. That penalty is accepted. It's first down and five. So the penalty against number 72, Dave Pizzuli, is accepted. Double jeopardy here. Chris Rockins also called on the uh, penalty. Only seven seconds remaining. The ball spotted at midfield. It's been all Browns led by Bernie Kozar, who has had a magnificent first half. short range and that will do it for the half and Marcus Allen on the reception picked up eight and the Raiders hearing it from the crowd head coach Tom Flores for the uh, second straight season in an also ran situation and he's trailing the Browns at halftime 17-3 four cars from Chrysler show the world how America competes Dodge Omni America, Plymouth Horizon America. At $59.95, the best value of any small car from America. And now, Dodge Aries America, Plymouth Reliant America. At 16 to 3, NFL Live halftime activities will be continuing. We'll be back after these messages from your local station.
On Family Ties, it's a Keaton Christmas when Alex plays Kris Kringle. <laughs> and on My Two Dads. Eggnogs all around. Dick Butkus and the Dads make it a comedy Christmas for Nicole. Then, Michael J. Fox discovers a monstrous secret. An explanation is probably long overdue. And becomes the ultimate party animal, Teen Wolf, tonight. Are you paying too much or your rates too high? Leave it to the good hands, people. Does your insurance bill make you want to cry? If you're not happy with your insurance bill, join the more than 6 million families who enjoy solid Allstate homeowners protection at sensible Allstate rates. So take those blues and face some dough. Give us a call, cause our rates are low. Leave it to the good hands, people. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. At 11, do tipsters have winning info on NFL games? We welcome those of you watching the Browns and Raiders. Cleveland in front, 17-3. They've lost eight consecutive games to the Raiders. Oakland and Los Angeles combined haven't beaten them since 1973. As has been noted during the game telecast, the only importance for the Browns regarding this game is that they want to have as good an overall record as possible if they make the playoffs because that gives them a better home field advantage situation. But even should the Raiders come from behind and beat the Browns in this game, Cleveland is still the champion of the AFC Central with a win next Saturday at Pittsburgh. Bob, what they're looking for here is momentum. They really want to get a roll into the uh, into the playoffs because last year they were just a couple of minutes out of being into that Super Bowl. And they've been led uh, the last couple of weeks by Bernie Kozar. Four touchdown passes last week. This week he's playing very well. And next week we'll feature him in a feature. The Indianapolis Colts are trying to take the lead in the AFC East. Buffalo has already lost. If the Colts win today at San Diego and they're leading in the third quarter 13-7, and if Miami loses at home tonight to the Redskins, Indy will be alone in first place with a week remaining. Dean Biasucci has hit two more field goals. He's made nine in a row. He's 23 of 26 for the season, and two of his three misses have been from better than 50 yards. Eric Dickerson has reached 1,000 yards on the button but only 23 yards on 11 carries. And last week, he managed just 19 yards, lowest total of his career in a game against Buffalo. So Dickerson has been stuffed the last couple of weeks, but the Colts have the lead 13-7. San Francisco is in front of Atlanta, but at Candlestick Park, where the 49ers were favored by about 17 points, it's a close game, 7-0 early in the third quarter. Jerry Rice with a five-yard touchdown run not pass reception for the only TD of this game. The Cardinals get two first-half touchdown passes from Neil Lomax to offset one by Vinny Testaverde of the Bucks. 14-7 St. Louis at halftime in Tampa Bay. The Cards are still alive, but barely in the wild-card chase in the NFC. Earlier today, Seattle beat the Bears. First time the Bears have lost two in a row since 1984. It was the regular season finale for Walter Payton at Soldier Field. The Seahawks win by a score of 34-21, but Payton had a good day, 79 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. Here Here's the introduction, standing ovation at Soldier Field before the game. They retired his uniform number 34 in pregame ceremonies. Watch this, the big play. The game was tied at 14 in the third quarter. David Craig with the screen pass to John L. Williams. He gets good blocking. Ron Mattis way downfield, number 70, to screen off one potential tackler. Williams skips by another. It's a 75-yard catch and run. The Seahawks, who have a chance at a wild card or the division title, maybe, in the AFC West, depending upon how things break, wins at Soldier Field, 34-21. to By the way, Steve Largent in this game had three catches, so he's still five away from breaking Charlie Joyner's all-time record. Houston beats Pittsburgh 24-16. to The Oilers get a pair of touchdown passes from Warren Moon to Drew Hill. Let's take a look at one of them. This one comes in the fourth quarter, third and 21 on the Pittsburgh 30-yard line, up top, TD, second of the game for Hill. The Oilers beat Pittsburgh head-to-head -head twice this year, 24-16, the final score. Minnesota inches closer to a wild card. If the Cardinals lose today, the Vikings are in. Regardless of what the Cards or Rams do the rest of the way, the Vikings are in if they win their last game. 17-14 today, a Viking victory at Detroit. Philadelphia eliminates the Jets from the playoff picture in the AFC East. The Jets are the only team in the division that's out of it now. 38-27 is the final score. Three touchdown passes for Randall Cunningham. 
Graham, one to Chris Carter, two to Mike Quick. Al Toon had a big day in defeat for the Jets. He caught 10 passes for better than 150 yards. New England wins at Buffalo 13 to 7. So both those clubs are now 7 and 7 with a game to play. The big play on the five yard line of the Patriots, fourth down, late in the fourth quarter, and the Bills went for it. Kelly's pass into the end zone fell incomplete. New Orleans spots Cincinnati a 24 3 lead, but the Bengals blew another one at home. New Orleans roars back with 38 unanswered points, and they beat the Bengals 41 to 24. And so New Orleans keeps the pressure on San Francisco and the NFC West as they up their winning streak to eight. The Saints are now 11 and three with the 41 24 victory. And I understand something's happening in the San Francisco Atlanta game. Jerry Rice has caught a touchdown pass. He's caught a 20 yard touchdown pass and broke the most touchdowns in a season, which was held by uh, Mark Clayton. That was his 19th. Okay, 19th touchdown reception for Rice. That's the season record. He had shared it with Clayton. He has also now caught a touchdown pass, at least one in 12 consecutive games, and that's a record, too. He'd been tied at 11 with Elroy Hirsch and Buddy Dial, and I assume that gives San Francisco a 14-0 lead. That's right, 14-0 at home in the third quarter against the Falcons. Now let's go back out to the West Coast. Welcome back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Marv Albert with Joe Namath, Cleveland Browns leading the Los Angeles Raiders by the score of 17 to 3. Bernie Kosar has been the story. He had a brilliant first half, uh, 13 for 19, one touchdown. Webster Slaughter with five receptions. But uh, we saw one of the Joe Willie Namath pet peeves at the end of that uh, first half on the part of the uh, Los Angeles Raiders. You were steaming. Well, so many times at the end of the first half, there's just enough time left for one play. Why do you drop a ball off with, to, a, to a running back or hand it to a running back, throw the short pass, when you have 60 yards to go? You have nothing to lose by throwing the ball downfield, hope for a great catch, or even an interference call on the defense that'll give you a chance for the field goal. But this kind of a play is not going to get you a touchdown or a field goal. This has happened so many times this season, and, and I can't figure out why. We said right at the uh, start that the Raiders should go for the uh, long bomb. This kickoff, incidentally, sponsored by Budweiser, the uh, king of beers. We have not seen Mark Wilson go for the long bomb, but one of the factors is the absence of uh, Doki Williams, who is now uh, sidelined because of a uh, strained left knee. But he has James Loft and the premier deep threat in the game, or one of them along with Jerry Rice. They tried to get to Lofton once downfield reasonably deep. He was open, but Wilson overthrew him. The thing that's helped the, the Browns so far uh, is Bernie Kozar. Now, the Raiders are trying to get some pressure back there on the quarterback to prevent their cornerbacks from being out there all day long one-on-one. -on -one. But every time a defensive man gets close to Kozar, he reads it and he gets rid of the ball. His timing has been wonderful today. All right, Chris Barr kicking off to Glenn Young. Young, the deep man, good kick. And Young from his goal line. Out to the 20. Glenn Young, the four-year pro from Mississippi State. And here comes Ernie Kozar. That play on the tackle. Very impressive first half uh, for Kozar. And the Browns actually playing catch up in terms of time of possession. You recall the Raiders have it, or had it for almost uh, the entire first half of the first quarter. They only got three points. The Browns didn't give up the long gainer. All right, Kevin Mack, the lone deep back. Ernest Beiner flanked out to the left side as we get underway in this third quarter. First down. The Browns from the 21. Get in, Danny! Keep looking, keep and looking! And Kozar throwing on first down. A beautiful timing pattern for Webster Slaughter. And it was fumbled and recovered by the Raiders, Sam Seal, after the 41-yard reception. Seal just stole the ball. He just took it away from Webster Slaughter this time. Slaughter in the middle of your screen, number 84, just runs a straight pass route, runs just past Seal. The ball is right there. Now Seal will just reach in and grab the ball. Look, he takes it away from him. Hey, that's what I found. That is a clean swipe by Sam Seal. Truly a theft, huh? That's not giving up. Seal was beat, but he wouldn't give up. He came back with the second effort and turned it into a good play. A nice play by Sam Seal. 
Sam Seal, the man replacing the injured All-Pro Mike Haynes, getting the ball back to the Raiders. And Wilson able to complete at midfield to James Lofton. Stopped by the combination of Frank Benefield and Ray Ellis. That's what we're talking about, getting the ball downfield deep to Lofton. Now, to do that, they're going to have to have good pass protection, and Wilson's been getting good pass protection this entire game, but they've been trying to hit the intermediate passes. They need to go deep to Lofton and more often. 18-yard pass play. Lofton with his first catch of the day and a first down at the 46-yard line in Cleveland territory. Here's Allen. And Marcus Allen has stopped at the 45 by the inside linebacker Mike Johnson. Up front, the Raiders with Don Mosbar at center, Bill Lewis, Dean Moraldi at the guards, Brian Holloway, and the rookie from Missouri, number one draft pick, John Clay at the tackles. Brian Holloway was a question mark for today. His wife gave birth to twins last Monday in Boston, and Brian had spent most of the week back in Boston. Second and nine, as Wilson airs one out. for Dixon on the coverage of James Lofton. Step for step with Lofton was Hanford Dixon right there. The ball had it been thrown perfectly would have been intercepted. You want to go deep but when you see the guy has that kind of coverage you'd like to have an alternative receiver to come off of at the top of the screen on the top right you see Hanford Dixon in excellent position. If the ball is on target Dixon's going to intercept it. So James Lofton is now a target. And coming into today, averaging 22 yards per catch, that is the best in the AFC. Third down and nine. And the Raiders pick up the first down. Marcus Allen stopped by Clay Matthews and Frank Benefield. <laughs> is he calling the next play, Joe? Is that... <laughs> Mark Wilson looking at the youngster and saying, yes, good idea. That's the right go play. With number one. That's right. We'll go with number one pass, Pat. A 12-yard advance. So Mark Wilson has come out sharp here in this third quarter, has a first down at the Cleveland 34. Strahan and Allen are the running back. Short setup, and it's Lofton. Getting to the 26-yard line, Frank Minifield on the stop, picked up eight. It's amazing when you catch a deep pass, 15, 18 yard, how that cornerback will lay off. You see Minifield was a good five yards off of him, and Chris Rock in number 37 couldn't get underneath. One pass completion to a wide receiver deep is going to change the whole, the whole look the defense will give you. They get afraid. They don't want to give up the quick touchdown. Lofton now split to the left side, top of your screen for the second down and two. And Wilson going that way. Incomplete. Hanford Dixon on the coverage. Lofton with a mild complaint. Mild, yeah. You didn't see uh, Lofton complain a great deal because Dixon was in excellent shape once again. That's twice he stepped for step. He does give him a little bump here. You see, but he's going for the ball. He was turned looking for the ball, Dixon was, and uh, obviously the official didn't think it was interfering. And for Dixon plays the aggressive bump and run. He's one of the NFL's best cornermen. Made the Pro Bowl last year with five interceptions. Third down and two. Raiders go triple tight end. Wilson off the roll and throws the other way has the first down. Todd Christensen on a seven-yard pickup, his second catch of the afternoon. Good communication between Wilson and Christensen. Christensen saw the zone coverage. The linebacker was to his front side or to his left, and he just stopped and went back to find the dead area. It's a good pull-up here by Wilson. He sees he can't get outside and looks back for Christensen, who finds the open spot. Raiders now first down at the Browns, 18. Four minutes gone by in the third quarter. Here's Allen with the hole getting inside the 15. Mike Johnson, man who leads the Cleveland Browns in total tackles. Inside linebacker on the right, stopping Allen. 
Well, he didn't stop Marcus uh, Cole, that's for sure. Marcus Allen and Mike Johnson collide rather viciously here, and you'll see Marcus Allen wins that battle. He gets an extra yard, yard and a half, maybe two with his forward body lead. He's a strong running back, as well as quick. Good receiver out of the backfield. All pro Marcus Allen. And he's caught seven passes to the second down, and five. Wilson have the time, and broken up. Frank Manyfield getting a piece of it. The intended receiver, Jesse Hester. Classic example of the quarterback not being set when he's throwing the football. Mark was a little off balance, and he couldn't put enough heat on the ball. If you watch his footwork, you see he's not going to be set. So he's open. He's open. He's wide open. That left shoulder was open. He's throwing open. Meantime, it should have been a touchdown. <laughs> Hester should have caught the pass, no doubt yeah. about it. Poor technique by Wilson. He throws the ball right on the money, and the receiver drops it. Here you see Mark Wilson. Of course he's upset. I don't blame him for being upset. You can't pass it and catch it, too. Not very often, anyway. Third and five, and the uh, fumble recovered by the Browns. But a, a flag is down. And let's see what the call is. Marcus Allen coughed it up. That's Chris Rockins, the strong safety with the ball. Sam Clancy is down. Official timeout being signaled. I will right, we'll be back to uh, check this all out in just a moment. We'll take a break with the timeout. Let's pause for these words. Introducing a high-performance luxury sedan made the Mazda way. High-performance luxury sedans traditionally ask you to pay a pretty dear price. Well, that's not the Mazda way. Mazda's all-new 929 has world-class luxury appointments. It's amazingly quiet, solid riding, and actually outperforms those guys. Now there's less standing between you and a car this good. About $8,000 less. This is the Mazda way. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place. Hey. If you can, take a little time from your busy day to give encouragement to someone who's lost the way. MasterCard will donate money to six worthy causes, and it won't cost you a thing. Look for the balance and help choose where the money goes. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Choose to make a difference. Choose MasterCard. There's strong safety Chris Rockins a moment ago recovered the uh, Marcus Allen fumble. No flag on that play, so the uh, fumble recovery holds up. Here it is. Ball pops loose. You see the official on the top left-hand side of your screen, the umpire throwing his hat in there. That's the, supposedly they're trying to mark the spot of the fumble where it occurred. And of course, Cleveland recovered. That's how losers are made, by the way. It drops touchdown pass by Hester, and then you follow it up with a fumble. So Sam Clancy on the sideline shaken up. Check him out. Browns take over at their seven. That's a, a critical turnover. The Raiders are marching downfield. Kevin Mack on the stop. So Rod Martin getting credit for the tackle. Today's game is brought to you by Mazda, bringing performance and value together. That's the Mazda way. By IBM. And by Chanel, it wouldn't be Christmas without Chanel. Marv Albert, Joe Namath from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The Browns 17, the Raiders 3, second and six for Cleveland from their 11-yard line. Picks up on the handoff and a fumble by Mack, but the Browns able to cover it up. Kevin Mack right on it. Long and Jones converging. 
Kozar is trying to get the ball to Mack, and it looked like they were a little close. The handoff appeared to be okay, but uh, the mesh didn't look quite right. I wouldn't know who to put the blame on there, but the important thing for the Browns is they recovered their own fumble. When the running back drops that ball, fall on it right away. Don't try and pick it up. It is a third down and nine from the eight. Some interesting fumble recovery drills that I know that you have taken that part. A completion to Brian Brennan. Getting out to the 38 yard line, picked up 30. James Davis on the stop. Can you tell me one time during the course of practice if uh, a football has dropped you immediately with pounce on it? Right now, right away. Again, Kozar is getting good protection and he throws the ball just perfectly. Brennan, without the greatest speed in the world, is still able to get by these guys. Of course, you see Large it up at Seattle who doesn't have the speed, he can get by the guy. You know, we used to practice that Mar back in college even. Anytime a ball hit the ground, it was Bryant's theory at Alabama, our coach, someone fall on it right away, developed a good habit of getting on the ball quickly. So if you're walking down the street and someone is carrying a football and dropped it, fall on it. <laughs> First down at the 38 yard line. And goes on and goes sideline. Ajit Langhorn. On the uh, short pickup, three yard advance. I know Washington made the tackle. Second down and seven as we sweep around the uh, 10 minute ticker. Bears losing for the uh, second straight week. Houston over Pittsburgh, so the Oilers still alive. New England putting uh, themselves in excellent position. The Jets losing to the Eagles. All over for the Jets. And the later games, Indianapolis in front of uh, San Diego. Second and seven from the 41. Getting to that first down marker, picked up eight. Turan and Anderson combining to make the stop. We're halfway through this third quarter. A check of what is going on around the league. In what has been a wacky uh, season, Denver clinching a playoff berth with the Pittsburgh loss to Houston. And what it comes down to next week for the Cleveland Browns, if they beat Pittsburgh, they win the AFC Central. And that will be seen right here on NBC at 12 noon Eastern Time. Don Cricky, Bob Trumpy will be on hand for the action. Cleveland Browns, as we mentioned earlier, have had all kinds of problems at the Three Rivers Stadium. It has been a house of horrors for Cleveland. In 17 years, they've won only once in Pittsburgh, and that one win took place last season. The Steelers win. The AFC Central is theirs. First down at the 48. Kevin Mack. Stopped by Greg Townsend. Six and a half remaining in this third quarter. This is the third West Coast trip for the Browns this season. Lost their first two out of San Diego and at San Francisco since 1984. The Browns have won only one of six games in the West. Last year, the Browns lost to the Raiders here at the Coliseum as Jim Plunkett threw for three touchdown passes. Two to Doki Williams. Second and eight at midfield to the outside and close to the first down a nine yard advance Rod Martin the outside linebacker and safety man Eddie Anderson combining on the tackle well you can bet that that was an audible made by Kozar at the line of scrimmage the Raiders had their strength to the Browns right side of the offense that time they had a safety man right up on the line of scrimmage so Kozar chose to have Matt go off the left side for the big gainer Kozar's leadership abilities are so good and uh, they're so variable because he can throw the football, because he has desire, but as importantly is because he's smart. He's convinced these guys they're running the right play every time it's snapped. Third down and one. The first down picked up by Kevin Mack.
Howie Long, number 75, in the middle of the screen, gets double teamed there. Ho, Ryzen, and Pike both double teamed Howie Long, and Mack was able to go over the top. It's amazing how a man that size can get that high in the air, take the old swan dive. Kevin Mack, who goes six feet, 225 pounds, and is third season in the NFL out of Clemson. Played a couple of years here in the USFL with uh, the Los Angeles Express. And Kozar gunning it downfield. The uh, intended receiver, Ernest Biner, fell down. He's probably not used to this good a playing surface. You know, in Cleveland, they have the holes and everything, the ditches. He's used to that right now. This field's in such good shape. Uh, he's not used to it. You're going to have uh, the Cleveland grounds crew all over you, Joe. Oh, they'll be the first ones to tell you. You know, they have their hands full trying to keep that field in shape. It is a second and ten. From the 40, Herman Fontenot has come on. So Fontenot and Biner now in the backfield. Round 17, Raiders three, four and a half left in this third quarter. Kozar completes for the first down to Brennan. His fifth catch of the day, 11-yard pass play. James Davis on the stop of Ryan Brennan. Excellent possession receiver out of Boston College. An excellent pass protection. Brennan just breaks clean when he's supposed to. The timing is there. Davis isn't far away from him, but the timing is so good on Kozar's and Brennan's behalf that there's no way Davis can stop him. At uh, Boston College, Brian Brennan was a small, successful target for a small, successful quarterback by the name of Doug Flutie. First down at the Raider 29-yard line. Change of direction by Mack. Rod Martin was right there. We haven't heard from Ozzie Newsom yet today. I don't believe he's caught a pass. He has quite a string going, and uh, well, we may be seeing something special here. Yes, uh, his next catch will be his first. Ozzie Newsom, the NFL's all-time leading pass receiving tight end, with that streak on the line. Second and nine, down at the 28. Flag thrown as Biner went for a couple. Bill Pickell on the stop. And the Browns hit with the penalty. Holding number 61 on the offense. Still second down. All right, the hold on the center, Mike Bath. Well, you wonder why we don't hear Howie Long's name uh, often uh, these days. It's because he's getting tackled, he's getting held. Here he still gets in to make the tackle, but uh, Bab had him around the legs and pulled him down. They usually assign two guys to block this young man, uh, Howie Long, who's been in the Pro Bowl several times. And, hey, when you get a reputation like uh, Long, uh, you deserve to have two guys coming after you. He's that good. Second and 19 back at the 38. Two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in this third quarter. And Kozar completes. Short of the first down, Clarence Weathers going for 15 yards. Ron Fellows, the extra defensive back, making the stop on Weathers. Weathers coming from the left side of the screen toward the middle of the screen. Just gets underneath the zone coverage and uh, <laughs> finally holds on to the ball. Ron Fellows trying to keep up with him. Can't do it. If you don't get pressure on Kozar, and obviously the Raiders aren't getting any pressure back there, it's tough to stop these guys with your second string backfield. Again, Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes, the starting corners, neither one of them are in the game, so you're playing with substitutes. Kozar now 18 out of 24, 272 yards, looking at a third down. And four and a marker and it's broken up almost intercepted by Ron Fellows number 21 pass intended for Clarence Weathers pass 
Illegal motion at the snap call on the Browns. Bernie Kozar having himself another sensational season, but uh, so much has been discussed about the awkward style and the motion. Would you tamper with it at all? Well, it's kind of like uh, when your car is running well. You, you, you go get the engine fixed. I would. Lindy Infante says, sure. Uh, Bernie, the offensive coordinator, says Bernie Kozar doesn't have a, a good passing motion. His footwork isn't that good. In the meantime, he's completing passes at a 62% clip. He's not throwing the interceptions. He's an accurate passer. Let's not fool with it. There's a time and a place to work on technique. And that's during the offseason and the places to practice field. 41 yard field goal attempt by Matt Barr. Flags thrown as they lined it up. Barr has hit one of two, hit from 20, missed from 39. It's a fourth down and four, so let's see what the penalty is. It's against the Raiders, Matt Millen. Offside, and so the Browns will pick up the first down. On the left side of your screen, number 55, Matt Millen commits the costly air, breaks a fundamental roll of football, jumping off sides. All you have to do is catch the ball out of the corner of your eye when you're up on that line of scrimmage. Don't pay attention to the snap count. Don't anticipate the snap count, but wait until the ball moves. He just didn't wait until the ball moved, and he jumped off sides. Now Cleveland can possibly get seven. And they have a first down at the Raider 18, the Browns 17, Raiders three, minute and a half to go in this third quarter. Kozar <laughs> throwing. Touchdown. Webster Slaughter certainly enjoying the moment. A moment uh, not enjoyed by Eddie Anderson. That's right. It, Pilsar threw that ball right into double coverage that time. Slaughter stayed to the outside. First, he beat Seal, number 43, and Seal thought he had help deep, and he does, but he doesn't have help deep to the outside. You see, Slaughter stays outside away from number 33 and is able to make the touchdown catch. Anderson couldn't get over there. Second touchdown thrown today by Kozar now has 21 on the season. Webster Slaughter who caught two last week against Cincinnati with his seventh touchdown of the year. Schoenfeld is deaf and has a speech impairment, but a unique IBM computer system lets her talk on the phone. To help people with disabilities, IBM established a national center that provides information about special computer equipment made by IBM and other companies. So people like Art Sweet, who are almost blind, can read a financial statement. People like Neil Gill, who can't easily sign their names, can write a memo. And people who have difficulty using their arms, like Madge Pentecost, can use a computer by aiming an infrared beam. This IBM Center serves as a source of information for these and other innovations, so more people with disabilities can use their abilities. For information, write IBM Box C1030, Atlanta, Georgia. Introducing a small sedan made the Mazda way. The new Mazda 323 SE has a bunch of technical sophistication, like fuel injection, a roomy interior, lots of standard features, all backed by the best warranty in its class. I'm not kidding. You've got to check out this Mazda 323. Not only is it the best value in a small sedan, it also has the solid feel and performance of an expensive road car. This is the Mazda way. Join the President and First Lady in a special celebration of the holiday season with host Barbara Mandrell, Marilyn McCoo, Jack Jones, and more in Christmas in Washington, Monday. Webster Slaughter, not a popular guy among the uh, Los Angeles Raiders, just caught that 18-yard touchdown pass. 
Cleveland going 93 yards, holding the ball for just under nine minutes. And now here is the extra point attempt by Matt Barr. Mike Pagel will hold. So the Browns adding to their lead. Browns 23, Raiders 3. We'll be right back. If you thought you had to give up comfort to get a close shave, Norelco says, think again. Their revolutionary shaving system shaves skin close in a way that's incredibly comfortable. As the hair enters the chamber, the patented lift and cut system lifts each hair and holds it a split second before a blade cuts it. So it's possible to shave skin close without the blades even touching the skin. Norelco Rotitract, where close and comfortable come face to face. Trouble on the trail. Chasing a wayward bull's one thing. Bringing him home's another. Boy, I've never seen that before. And when you found a way to lure him back, you head for the mountain. Bush. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. Introducing a family sedan made the Mazda way. Toyota Camry, Honda Accord, and Mazda 626 are all great family sedans, but the 626 is really something special. For starters, it has a better warranty, much better. 12% more interior room than Camry and Accord. Plus, it's close to $1,000 less. And if all that's not special enough for you, just wait till you drive this world-class road car. This is the Mazda way. Next Saturday, the NFL plays here when the Browns battle the Steelers. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL Live. Indeed, today, emotional moments for fans of the uh, Raider Rets in a pregame ceremony. They have the annual awards handed out to the Raider Red of the Year, the Raider Rate Get This Joe Rookie of the Year, and the Best Raider Red Dancer of the Year. Moments that will not be forgotten. <laughs> Vance Mueller on the return. Out to the 35-yard line. We have a minute and 24 left in this third quarter. The Browns leading the Raiders by the score of 24 to 3. And uh, yet another commercial timeout. So we'll be back right after these messages. You know, the other day, my MCI rep called me up. Says he'd like to stop by with some new ideas. I think my long distance gets complicated again. Then he shows me how I've outgrown my current MCI service. And with a couple of changes, I can have more efficient, more economical long distance. I couldn't believe it. This MCI guy called me up to lower the bill. Until you call, you'll never know how much better a long-distance company can be. MCI. Let us show you. As long as I've known, Tom, I need help. He's there. Sure, I'm glad to see you. Stay with you. Figured you wouldn't mind. And when the last trays rounded up, you head for the mountains. Bush. And the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Sure are you one. How about this in here? Head for the mountains of Bush Beer. Let me build. The best and brightest of the bowls are on NBC as the number one Oklahoma Sooners take on the only team to have beaten them in three seasons, the number two Miami Hurricanes, a battle of undefeateds for the national championship at the Orange Bowl. On New Year's Day, college football's best and brightest are on NBC. 
Van McElroy sitting it out the rest of the way. Suffered a concussion earlier in the day. Talking with uh, outside linebacker Lyndon King. It has been all Cleveland. They lead the Raiders 24 to 3. We're winding down in the third quarter. The Raiders now first down from their 34. And the swing for Allen. Marcus out across the 45, 12-yard advance, and a first down. Frank Minifield, the left corner, made the stop. Cleveland's defense on the last play played a very soft type zone defense. They dropped back in the coverage enabled Allen to get the ball in his hands and have running room to spare. That was the big first down play. First down from the uh, 46. And Bob Golick uh, making the stop a two yard pickup. Cleveland Browns need a victory next week over the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, in Pittsburgh, and that would clinch the AFC Central race. There are many other uh, possibilities, and I know Joe will be running them down at uh, greater detail later in this uh, fourth quarter. Actually, 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. play and broken up pass intended for Marcus Allen Clay Matthews on the stop next Saturday here on NBC starting at 12 noon Eastern time it will be Pittsburgh and Cleveland they met back in week number two in Cleveland a horrendous day for Mark Wilson intercepted five times this uh, one of the interceptions uh, picked off by Clay Matthews I should say Mark Malone uh, had that uh, rough day. There's a Freudian slip. Uh, Joe's <laughs> scorecard is uh, even at uh, one and one. Cleveland winning that first game going away. So that'll be next Saturday here on NBC. And Wilson throwing on the run. It is incomplete. And for Dixon on the stop. Pass intended for Jesse Hester with uh, just three seconds to go in the third quarter. Now Wilson did everything he could to try and get the first down. They had third down, 16, 17 yards. Pass protection broke down when he couldn't find anybody. So Mark moves to his left here nicely. We'll see an open receiver just in front of Mark possibly, but he knows he can't get the first down, so he chooses the deep receiver, and Hanford Dixon makes a good play on the ball. And in punt formation is Stan Talley. His fourth punt of the day. First-year man from... Texas Christian. Last year, Tally was in the Browns camp and was beaten out by Jeff Gossett, who recently was dropped by the uh, Browns and then picked up by Houston. The return by McNeil, 36 yard punt, 11 yard return. And that is it for the third quarter. At the end of three, Cleveland 24, the LA Raiders three, back after these words from your local station. Join the President and First Lady in a special celebration of the holiday season with host Barbara Mandrell, Marilyn McCoo, Jack Jones, and more in Christmas in Washington, Monday. Someone put a bender in my left front fender. Leave it to the good hands, people. I got a dent in the door of my four by four. Allstate makes an accident a little easier to take. We offer a repair guarantee, and in most cases, we'll give you a settlement on the spot. I parked in a lot in a place that I trusted, but when I returned, my window was busted. Leave it to the good hands, people. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. We on the selection committee feel that this new Cintas uniform rental program will favorably impact employee performance, save them time and money, and improve the overall image of the company. Great, so what do the employees think? My uniform's red hot. My uniform's red hot. Hey, it looks good. Looks good. And feels fine. Feels fine. Uniforms from Cintas. Because if you're not in Cintas, you're not in uniform. Red hot. Red hot. Looks good. Warm up all your holiday activities with something new. McDonald's Holiday Chicken McNuggets. In festive 9 and 20-piece packs.
tasty chunks of chicken and two new sauces. Tangy cranberry with a twist of orange and sweet apple spiced with cinnamon. Better chime in before holiday McNuggets are gone. The right way to buy a car, Monday on AM Cleveland. On to the fourth quarter here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Now to further clear up the playoff picture in the AFC Central. I mentioned earlier that if Bernie Kozar and his Browns win next week in Pittsburgh, it would be clear cut that they do win the AFC Central. If Houston wins next week against Cincinnati and Pittsburgh wins, there would be a three-way tie, and then Houston would win it best based on the uh, tiebreaker, the uh, better record against the, uh, the other two teams. A very complicated situation in the AFC Central. The intended receiver was Ozzie Newsom, Jerry Robinson. On the coverage, it'll be a second and 10 from the 36. Hey, it's getting time for Ozzie Newsom to catch a pass here. He was one-on-one -on -one that time with Jerry Robinson and open. The ball was there, but Ozzie just didn't hold on to the pass. Ozzie Newsom in his 10th year out of Alabama, three-time Pro Bowl player. Last year, he considered retirement. A frustrating injury plague season, but changed his mind. Second down and 10. And now Newsom with his first catch of the day, stopped by uh, Eddie Anderson. So uh, Ozzie Newsom continues that consecutive game streak. He had to get rid of the ball quickly. Kozar read the safety blitz on the left side of the screen. You'll see the safety coming in on Kozar. Or there he is, number 30. Turan leaves Newsom wide open where Anderson comes over and makes the tackle. But Kozar doesn't get rid of the ball quickly. Then Turan is going to be in on Kozar. So it was a good read by Bernie. That a, a streak continuing play, only a two yard pickup. And a, a third down and eight. Intercepted. Stacy Turan picking it off. And goes 48 yards for the score. Brian Brennan, the intended receiver. And Bernie Kozar intercepted for only the eighth time this season. That is low in the NFL. Good catch by Turan. Ball slightly underthrown. Turan gets up in the air high. Get up there. Makes a nice catch and a good run back. You know, a few plays back, Jesse Hester holds on to the ball in the end zone, and we don't have the fumble by the Raiders. You have a different looking game right now. This interception certainly does make it a lot closer, and uh, we'll see if the Raiders can grow with what momentum they have right now. Stacy Turan having his best season in the NFL. That's his third interception of the year. Chris Barr putting it through. Second time he's run one back for a touchdown. Stacy Turan, four-year man from Notre Dame. And the Raiders now trail the Browns 24-10. Nowadays, when it comes to telecommunications, there's a great deal of confusion. With so many different products and services available, it's a real problem knowing what's just right for your company. Well, we have a way to end that confusion and solve those problems. We can help custom tailor an entire telecommunications system to your company's exact needs. No. GTE. Sandwiches from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Hey, 
professor. Oh, I thought only students fell asleep in your class. Oh, uh, they're just trying to get these finals graded. You ought to revive with Viverin. Oh, Viverin. Helps wake you up. Oh, yeah. Government appointed experts confirm Viverin is effective. Revive with Viverin. Well, this game has been uh, out of sight for some time. Perhaps a lift provided by Stacy Turan on the interception for a touchdown. Well, the Raiders have been outplayed all afternoon, and with this interception, they can get some momentum going. But after watching the first three quarters of this game, there's no doubt in my mind which team is the better of the two. And of course, being the Cleveland Browns. Well, the confusion off the kickoff. Reggie Langhorn finally got to it. Andy Parker on the uh, tackle of uh, Langhorn. Here it is again as uh, Glenn Young muffed it. Langhorn providing some help and got it out to the nine yard line. Pretty good return, you know, had they hit the ball on the one or two yard line, we would see some problems for the Brown offense. Right now they have a little more working room I'd say. And this crowd which has been very quiet and is usually very quiet showing some signs urging the Raider defensive unit on. Kevin Mack to the 14 picked up five it'll be a second down and five. Rick Townsend Rod Martin combining on the stop. A good surge by the Cleveland offensive line yeah, that time. Yards. Bab, Ryzen, Fike, they all got in there that time to get the, the blocking going. You know, the games are usually won. You've heard it time and again at the line of scrimmage. Well, today we can't say that. I think the cornerbacks have been the problem for the Raiders, but the offensive line of the Browns is still continuing to do a good job. Biner is split wide to the left, top of your screen. Back the lone deep back. Here's Kevin Mack. Across the 15, Bill Pickell on the stop. It'll be a third down and three. Sure, Coach Schottenheimer's concern at this point is the turnover. He doesn't want to commit the turnover down here to let that momentum grow. If anything, go ahead and punt the ball away and let your defense take control. They've been playing a, uh, a fine game this, this whole afternoon. Cleveland Browns seeking a rare victory against the Raiders. Raiders have won eight of nine all time during the course of the uh, regular season. Third down and two. And Kozar overthrowing Slaughter. So the Browns are held. Sam Seal covering Webster Slaughter. Yeah, and number 99, Sean Jones, is going to apply some pressure here. Kozar just gets rid of the ball when he gets the hit by Sean Jones. And we will see the first punt of the day by the Cleveland Browns. That's uh, how well things have been going. Lee Johnson, who was recently picked up here in his first game uh, last week against the Cincinnati Bengals, and gets the good roll of Chris Woods was the uh, deep man along with uh, Fontenot chasing it down. It's a 38 yard punt by Johnson. Dissatisfaction with the uh, punting of F. Gossett and George Winslow leading to the uh, change in the kicking game by Marty Schottenheimer. 12.05 to go in this fourth quarter. A 14 point lead for the Browns. There's a free-spirited little animal whose territory is constantly expanding. It's the Ford Bronco 2. Making tracks in remote watering holes and lush feeding grounds. Clawing up mountain trails with V6 power to go where the herd gathers. And Bronco 2 switches to four-wheel drive when it's on the scent of off-road fun. The Ford Bronco 2. Its territorial range is bounded only by imagination. Now during Ford's leadership celebration, get $500 cash bonus on new Bronco 2s. That's him, isn't it? You bet it is. He's good. I just love the way he parties. Do you know why Spuds McKenzie has so much fun at parties? 
because he's always in control. And he knows how to make a party last. It takes good sense to have a good time. And Spuds knows it's cool to live by one simple rule. Know when to say when. A reminder from Anheuser-Busch. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. Santa, come see what I'd like for Christmas. I really like Radio Shack's Pop Time Watch. And look, a Red Fox Racer for my little brother. My big brother and sister would love Two Gun Laser Shack Game. And my favorite is the Teddy Talk Teddy Bear. He really talks. <laughs> you do have all this stuff at the North Pole, don't you? Don't you? Incredible toy values for Christmas from only $2.59. Only at Radio Shack. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Bud Light, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. Everything else is just a light. And by AT&T, the right choice. Bob Albert with Joe Namath from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Round 24, Raiders 10. And the Raiders now take over from their 46-yard line. Wilson. Picked up 11, another first down for the Raiders, who are showing spark for the first time today. Well, he's hitting his receivers a little bit. Christensen's been open working the middle, but they've, they've come to life on defense, of course, with the interception and stopping this last Cleveland effort. So if the offense can get something mounted here, uh, the Raiders can get right back in this game. Raiders first down at the Cleveland 43-yard line. And again, the completion for the first down. Chris Woods on the catch for 14. Felix Wright on the tackle. And some words between Woods and Wright. Chris Woods with his first catch of the season. On the left side of the screen, number 88, Chris Woods, just going to put pressure on the cornerback and then hook up in the spot. Malone, <laughs> Malone again. Wilson delivers the ball right on time. The pass protection was there. You give Wilson time, he'll find the receiver. First down from the 29. Vance Mueller, the ball carrier. Down to ten and a half remaining in this fourth quarter. Johnson, Mike Johnson down on the field. Looking at their left knee area. Certainly not a good sign. And an official timeout is taken. We'll be back right after these messages. At Braun, we believe simple is better than complicated. Order is better than confusion. Quiet is better than loud. Only through superior design can one achieve superior performance. It is this philosophy that has helped make Braun the number one selling foil shaver in the world. What's also helped is that no other shaver gives you a closer shave. Braun, now available in America. Hey, could I tap some of your computer expertise, son? So you finally gave in. Yeah, for starters, how does the disk fit into the disk drive? Okay, the Army can train you to program, operate, or fix computers. What does the printer interface do? It lets the computer talk to the printer. They talk to each other. What do they say? And then there's a telephone modem hookup. And the computer training you get is yours forever. Be all that you can be. Like you're not going to be the only computer expert in the valley. It's hot. It's cool. Ford Ranger is kicking up excitement with good looks, lots of power, great value. Having fun, looking good. Ford Ranger, built fun tough. A round of lights here? <laughs> Ask for Bud Light. The light beer with the first name and taste. Let me know when you're ready for another round. More Americans than ever are flying, but why has their faith in the airlines been grounded? Tom Brokaw anchors an NBC News special, Fear, Frustration, and Flying, Tuesday. Colts 
Well, Mike Johnson on the sideline now, shaken up on that last play. It is a second and ten. Raiders at the Cleveland 29. Browns leading the Raiders 24-10. And Wilson is hauled down. So Mark Wilson takes the sack, third sack of the day for the Browns. And it's Carl Hairston making it seven and a half on the season. Carl well, Harrison in the center of your screen, number 78, just goes to the outside. They ran a little end tackle game that it's called in football where the defensive end for the Browns came to his left and Carl looped around to the other side and no one picked him up. Carl seemed to recover fully from that injury in the first quarter and seems to be just fine now. It is a third and 18 from the 37. And Wilson in trouble again. Away as he was chased by Dave Fazuli. Pass intended for Chris Woods. Dave Fazuli, man who came off the bench last season for six sacks, is five this year in his fifth year out of Pittsburgh. You have to credit the defensive front this time. This pattern just took too much time for Mark Wilson to wait around to be able to throw the ball. He was forced out of the pocket long before Woods came open. So you have to give credit to defensive uh, pressure by the Browns on the last play. And the Raiders in punt formation here is Stan Telly getting set to punt to Gerald McNeil. His fifth punt of the day. Stan Telly who has been inconsistent. Stephon Adams uh, try to keep it away from the end zone. A 37 yard punt. They'll bring it out to the 20 with nine and a half remaining in this fourth quarter. The Browns lead it by 14. Hi there. You looking for Mr. Wright? Give this guy a light. Wow. And Bud Light here. Ooh. Ask for Bud Light. A light beer with the first name and taste. Because everything else is just a light. Thanks. Keep the chains. Nobody does it better. In the new world of minivans, nobody does it like the Ford Aerostar. Nobody gives you the highly distinctive styling, the smooth riding comfort, the engineering innovations of Ford Aerostar for the discriminating. Baby, you're the best. Nobody does it like Ford Aerostar. During Ford's leadership celebration, get $500 cash bonus on Aerostar passenger wagons. You can depend on AT&T Long Distance thanks to the remarkable people who put our equipment to the test. I love wrecking things. This is a special laboratory. Here we create disasters. One disaster right after another. Why do we do all this? Once we understand how these things can destroy long-distance service, we can build equipment that'll stand up to it. We're reaching further to bring your world closer. Yeah, the storm's over. AT&T, the right choice. Is there a problem? The bridge is out. Well, I can get you where you're going. Stetson Cologne. Easy to wear, hard to resist. You're letting that great-smelling guy get away? Are you kidding? Kick off the new year with NBC at the Fiesta Bowl when Florida State faces Nebraska. And the USC Trojans take on Michigan State in the Rose Bowl. Then it's the battle for the national championship as number one Oklahoma takes on number two Miami at the Orange Bowl. New Year's Day, college football's best and brightest are on NBC. Crowd of 40,275, 10,800 unused tickets. The Capacity here at the uh, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum is 92,000 plus. So uh, it looks a little sparse out there with uh, the crowd of 40 on hand. First down from the 20. And Ernest Biter went for five. Stopped by the nose tackle, Bill Pickell. Yeah, five yards. Well, look at the, uh, the student five, and the five, teacher, five. Art Shell. Great all pro. He wore number 78. Looking 
John Clay wearing that number down. John Clay, number one draft pick out of University of Missouri. In the back, after sitting out the last two weeks because of the ankle problem. Finer. And he has the first down, six yard advance. Lionel Washington up from his right cornerback position. Indianapolis leading San Diego. San Francisco winning big over Atlanta. St. Louis over Tampa Bay. And earlier the Bears lost their second in a row. Houston knocking off Pittsburgh. Minnesota beating Detroit. We'll bring you up to date. It's a uh, first down at the uh, 31 yard line. Count by Kozar. And Biner stopped by Robinson, the inside linebacker. Picked up six. It'll be a second and four. Jets knocked out of it by the Eagles. New England is uh, making a run. They walloped the Jets last week, knocking off Buffalo today. New Orleans with their eighth straight win. Now, as we look to that ball game next Saturday, with uh, Pittsburgh at home for Cleveland. If Cleveland beats Pittsburgh, they win the AFC Central. If Pittsburgh wins it, and if Houston wins, Houston will win on the tiebreaker. Hillers can do it as a wild card. And Brennan off the sideline pattern is uh, bumped out just short of the first down of the 40-yard line. I know Washington made the stop. Well, the last four years, Browns with only that one win in six games on the West Coast, they lost their two previous games out of the West uh, this season. And uh, next week, the big one at Pittsburgh, where they have won only once in 17 years, and that win took place last season. It is a third down and one at the 40. Second back coming through, Kevin Mack surging, looking for that first down. Jerry Robinson made the stop. And picked up the first down. I tell you, this impresses me. This offensive football team right now, keeping the ball on the ground, running the clock the way they need to run it. They have a two touchdown lead. They only mix in the throwing whenever uh, they need to mix it in. This series, the last defensive series by the Browns, was probably their big, biggest defensive series of the game, shutting down the Raiders, not allowing them to get close. This impresses me. These guys do look like a playoff team and uh, one to contend with, for sure. And they have a first down at the 42-yard uh, line. Ernest Biter stopped by yeah, Stacy Turan. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Raiders and the National Football League is prohibited. This game the property of the NFL and the Raiders and Browns. Second down and 10. 7th play of the drive and the Browns certainly taking their time. They're averaging, we're told, 28 seconds on the 32nd clock. Kevin Mack, the ball carrier, so they're just looking to uh, eat up that clock and certainly have been succeeding. Right, Bill Pickell in on the tackle, good lateral movement. Well, they have confidence in their defense. They know right now if they can run the clock down to, to four minutes or whatever from this field position, we're not going to allow the Raiders to get good field position. They can back them up with the punt. So Marty Schottenheimer is playing the percentages. He's telling his team, hey, let's not turn the ball over. We'll go ahead and count on our defense to stop the Raiders if we have to punt. And that clock has run down to five minutes to go in this fourth quarter. It's a third and eight. Kozar just did get it away, but incomplete. Slingshot toss by Kozar, intended for Weathers, covered by Fellows. Rod Martin all over Kozar that time. 
There's Greg Towns at number 93. Kozar has a unique knack of being able to release the ball just before he gets the hit. Here you see Towns and lay a good lick on him. And, ooh, that hurts, especially when the back of the head hits the ground. Meantime, it still could have been caught. The ball was a very catchable pass. Lee Johnson has had a very quiet day. That's Chris Woods. Woods out of the uh, Canadian Football League, one of their top punt return men the uh, past three years. But hasn't had a chance to uh, run one back. 41-yard punt. And a timeout called with 4.43 left, fourth quarter. These are special children. And this is a special place here in Cleveland. It's a unique United Way-supported hospital devoted to helping children with chronic medical conditions. Hi, I'm Bob Golick of the Cleveland Browns. And this is my wife, Jackie. And this is Health Hill Hospital. It's funded by the United Way here in Cleveland. This is Christina. She's lucky to be alive today. She was born with several chronic medical problems that kept her in hospitals for most of her young life. When Brian was born with a narrowing of the esophagus, surgery was the only hope. There were four operations. And even when the operations were successful in creating a new esophagus for Brian, then he had to learn to eat for the first time. The children here at Health Hill are great. Despite their problems, they just don't quit. Thanks to your help and support through the United Way, they're going to make it. So we can all say thanks. United Way. It brings out the best in all of us. This message furnished by the National Football League. Four minutes, 43 seconds remaining. In this fourth quarter, Cleveland Browns have had an enjoyable day. Bernie Kozar with the magnificent first half. Browns led at the half 17-3. They now lead at 24-10. Raiders attempting to get back. These are special it. children. Showed and this some is a special play. Off that interception by Stacy Curran, and he returned it 48 yards for the score. And now the Raiders first down from their 15-yard line. Marcus Allen, Vance Mueller, These are special children. running back. And this is a... And Wilson in trouble. And the play blown dead. Al Baker will get credit for the sack. Al Baker will get credit for the sack. But it was the middle of the line that forced him out of there. You see here Harrison coming in, and he's the one that forces Wilson to the left right out there to big Al Baker. It was either an in-the-grasp or certainly an intentional grounding call, one of the two, and they went for the in-the-grasp. Fourth sack of the day by the Browns, and Al Bubba Baker comes up with his fourth of the season. He is among the NFL's top sack men, among active players. Second down and 21. Allen out to the 14-yard line, met by the right corner, Hanford Dixon. We've seen a well-played game today by the Cleveland Browns. Offensively, defensively, their punting hasn't been uh, as good as you'd like it, but he's only had to do it a couple of times. There have been short punts. Uh, of course, uh, Barr missed one field goal, but overall, offensively and defensively, they've won the two phases, two of the three phases of the game they need to win. And uh, this crowd beginning to uh, file out, only 40,000 on hand. It has not been one of the thrillers of the season. But the Browns certainly have enjoyed themselves. James Lofton on the reception. 14-yard uh, pass play. Mark Hopper made the stop. And the first down picked up by the uh, Raiders. Cleveland really didn't have a great deal to lose today outside of home field prospects for the playoffs. But as you mentioned right at the start, winning does breed winning. But once you let down, that can have an effect the following week. Incomplete pass intended for the tight end, Todd Christensen, covered by Chris Rockins. But the game that the Browns are pointing toward is next week, next Saturday afternoon, against the Steelers in Pittsburgh. Sure, and again, the Browns are convincing themselves that they're a good team. They know that they can win games away from home. Now, Pittsburgh, having lost to Houston, certainly is not going to feel as good about the upcoming game as they would have had they won the game. Football is a, a game of emotions, man, and desire. And every little bit of positive thinking helps when you get out in that field. Second and 10 from the 28th. 
Wilson got it away to Allen. And he is able to extend for the first down up to the 40-yard line. Pick up 12. Clay Matthews on the stop. Clock is running down to 245 remaining in this fourth quarter. This uh, L.A. Raider team in transition as you watch uh, Wilson again, not able to find anyone, and then has to run it out of bounds. Now, Joe, you went through this with the uh, Jets following the uh, championship year, the contending seasons. How difficult is it to lose after so many years of success? It's an awful feeling. I mean, you see guys come and go, guys that uh, really aren't good players. It's frustrating for you to be on a team that does not uh, have a lot of good players. The Raiders uh, certainly have had injuries as an excuse and uh, the strike situation. But getting back to the Raiders losing streak, I know it was a combination of trying to get a young offensive line together or a new offensive line and young coupled with trying to train a new quarterback, a young quarterback. It's just not going to get done. And Wilson completes to Christensen. 19-yard pass play. And the ball is spotted at the Cleveland 40. And the Raiders right up to the line as we approach two minutes to go in this fourth quarter. First down at the Brown 40-yard line. Wilson getting the time and looks to run for the first down. He has it. And now just under two minutes to go in this fourth quarter. So the 12-yard sprint by Mark Wilson. Coach Schottenheimer is going to have to think about getting a different group of uh, pass rushers in here. Here's James Lofton running downfield. Seems he has the uh, man beaten, but Wilson went the other way. I'm sure Lofton's a little tired from running these pass patterns all day, too. He looks tired, but the group of guys that are tired right now are the pass rushers for the Cleveland Browns. They're going to have to get someone in to rush Wilson. Otherwise, he's going to move the ball into scoring position. And a timeout with a minute and 57 remaining in this fourth quarter. Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes, 1986. Quarterback Dan Marino versus quarterback Ken O'Brien. It's showtime as the Jets and the Dolphins put on a record-shattering aerial display that lasts all afternoon. Despite Marino's heroics, the combination of O'Brien to Wesley Walker clicks four times. The final, 51 to 45 Jets and 844 yards passing. Bombs away. Man, look at all these cans. They're worth a fortune. Joey, instead of recycling these cans for cash, I think we should donate them to a worthy cause. Donate? Hey, okay, my Maggie. Well, hello, worthy cause. Hey, Joey, what about your cans? Well, I guess it's worthy cause time. Recycle. Aluminum beverage cans today. Aluminum food containers tomorrow. Save them for a worthy cause. 35-year-old right defensive end Carl Hairston, who's had another solid performance. The defensive captain in his 12th year out of Maryland Eastern Shore. Finding up front for the most part with Sam Clancy and Bob Golick. Clancy was injured and was uh, forced to leave, so we've seen combinations of Al Baker and Dave Fazuli and Daryl Sims along with Golick and, and Hairston. Very nice, Joe. Would you explain that? First down from the... Uh, James Lofton, 28-yard touchdown pass play. Hanford Dixon on the coverage. So Lofton with his fifth touchdown catch of the season. And with a minute and 51 remaining in the fourth quarter, if the extra point is converted, the Raiders only a touchdown away. That's right, an onside kick or even a kickoff. They still have plenty of time to get the, well, not plenty of time, but they have some time to get the ball back. James Lofton with just a sensational catch. I mean, Dixon was right there with him. The ball was in the right place, and Lofton extended himself to make a great catch. And Chris Barr puts it through. 
So the Browns now lead the Raiders by the score of 24-17, but you never have the feeling that this is a 24-17 ball game. Well, it's not over. Here you see in the bottom right, Lofton fighting for position. It just makes a diving catch. James Lofton with the touchdown catch, and it is now Browns 24 and the Raiders 17. Can't help but wonder what this would have been like if Hester holds the ball in the end zone for the touchdown rather than drop it, and then the Raiders fumble the next play, and Cleveland takes it down to score. That was a 14-point swing uh, then. So Marty Schottenheimer taking a walk. Uh, this was uh, on the verge of a blowout. But the uh, Raiders clawing their way back into it. Chris Parr will kick it off. Cheryl McNeil is the lone deep man, but Brown's Expect that uh, Barr will put it uh, on the ground with a minute and 51 to go in this fourth quarter. So the Browns now clinging to a seven point lead. Raiders have three timeouts to work with, though, so that's to their advantage. Well, he does go deep. And here is McNeil on the return. And we would like to welcome all the those who are joining us with the uh, Cleveland Browns leading the uh, Los Angeles Raiders by the score of 24-17 just a moment ago. It was Mark Wilson combining with James Lofton on a 28-yard pass play, and suddenly the Raiders are back into it with just a minute and 46 to go in this fourth quarter. Lofton makes a fine diving catch here ahead of hand for Dixon. We've been talking about uh, the possibility of going deep to loft in the entire game. They finally did it. Now the Raiders have three timeouts with, uh, to use to possibly get the ball back. Marv Albert, Joe Namath from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. And Kozar goes to the ground to Mack. Now Kevin Mack stopped. And the clock is stopped. A loss of two on the play. Timeout has been called. Mack trying to get to the outside. Now the Raiders are going to call timeout as quickly as possible. As soon as they can. That's Robinson making the tackle from the backside, number 57. They have two more timeouts they can use. Ernie Kozar has had another terrific day. He's thrown a couple, intercepted once. That for a touchdown by Stacy Turan, who ran it back 48 yards. Biner going for 48 yards. The Browns have obviously done it in the air, and the key man has been Webster Slaughter with seven receptions and one touchdown. Four sacks for the uh, Browns. They've been all over uh, Mark Wilson. And uh, Wilson at 23 for uh, 36, but really didn't get anything going until the, uh, that fourth quarter drive, and then he completed it with the pass to Lofton. Marcus Allen has certainly been held in check. Bo Jackson sitting it out today because of the sprained ankle. Marcus Allen with nine catches, though, for 83 yards. Well, the big play when I look back is the one that Hester dropped in the end zone, the touchdown pass that Wilson threw to him. Hester holds on to it. We have a different game. Second and 11 from the 17, minute 39, remaining fourth quarter. And Ernest Biner brings up to the... 21 yard line again a timeout is taken six yard advance Lyndon King the outside linebacker made the stop to those viewers who have just joined us to watch rags to riches please stay tuned rags to riches will be seen in its entirety immediately following football except for mountain and Pacific time zone stations where the program will be seen at its regular time it will be a third down and six. The ball is spotted at the 22-yard line. The Raiders are down to one timeout remaining. Yeah, that's why I'd keep the ball on the ground once more. If I were the Browns quarterback or coach, I wouldn't even chance putting it up in the air. You might have an incompletion and do the Raiders a favor by stopping the clock. 
put it on the ground once more. If you don't make the first down, the Raiders are going to have to call timeout or they're going to lose a lot of valuable time from the clock. What you have to worry about is a block punt possibility. Browns have had their difficulty scoring points in the uh, fourth quarter of the last seven or eight games, although they have had leads and, of course, have uh, sat on the ball. So uh, that's, a, that's a tough stat to really measure, but they have been blanked here today. Cleveland with that seven-point lead. You see the time left in the fourth quarter. Four down and six. Flag thrown as Finer goes for the first down and some more, but a, a penalty marker is down. Ernest Biner getting outside and ran for 22, but let's see what this call is all about. The call against the Raiders' Greg Townsend. So the play will hold. And Biner for 22 yards gets the Browns out of a hole with a minute and 24 remaining. I think Biner's run uh, just now ended the Raiders' hopes. I can see the Browns keeping on the ground again, and uh, the Raiders just going to have to call timeout one more time, and then the Browns can run the clock out. Raiders are down to one timeout left. Browns have their three remaining. Get to the ground for Biner. Block is running, and now it is stopped as the Raiders use their final timeout. Minute 18 left, fourth quarter, and the Browns lead it by seven. Mustang GT, for people who want more out of life than a little peace and quiet. Fancy perfuming aftershave. It's got to be a quarterback's locker. Real guys who get mud on their uniforms use rugged, honest stuff. Ice blue aqua velva. There's something about today's aqua velva man. Look for aqua velva Christmas gift sets. Marv Albert, Joe Namath from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Marty Schottenheimer looking to get out of here with a rare West Coast victory for the Cleveland Browns. Earlier, they uh, lost San Diego and at San Francisco. Since 1984, the Browns have won only one of six games in the West. Last year, they lost to the Raiders here at the Coliseum as the Raiders were led by Jim Plunkett, who threw for three touchdowns. So now Bernie Kozar just looking to run it out. And Kevin Mack with a minute 10 and the clock running. Able to advance it for nine. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that it even handed yeah. off at this point, but you notice Kevin Mack had both hands wrapped on that ball. He's not going to try and do anything fancy right now. Just make sure he holds on to the ball. Our producer today, Glenn Adamo, our director, Dick Klein, statistician, Dennis Manishian, our spotters, Gretchen Meyer, Chuck Panama, and we uh, thank you all as you see the clock running down to 40 seconds. Remaining in this uh, fourth quarter, this looks like uh, Kozar will just hold on, yes. Cleveland Browns led it 17-3 to at the half. And then they extended to 24-3. to The interception and the 48-yard uh, return by Stacy Turan did get the Raiders back into it. And then Wilson did connect with Lofton. And uh, that's how it ends. The Browns over the Raiders by the score of 24 to 17. So the Raiders drop to five and nine. The Browns to a nine up and five down. But it comes down to next week against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. And our most valuable player award sponsored by Budweiser Cleveland quarterback Bernie Kozar.